And for more on the Houston win, let's go to Jerry West in the Rockets locker room. Okay, with Mike Newland, Mike had a great ball game today. The Rockets are right back in this playoff now. Well, Jerry, uh, we, we moved the ball down court a little bit better up in Boston. We try to slow it down all the time, and we have to run and play our game. And like you and I were talking before, we have to play our game and then try to blend with them too. We had uh, 26 points in ball game today, and I'm sure after having only 10 the first two ball games, you have to be very satisfied with your game. Well, I, I appreciate uh, that, and uh, I did try to play more involved. I, I found myself in the last two games, having watched a film, playing on the perimeter and trying to guide everything rather than get involved and give some thrust to it all. Mike, congratulations on a great ball game, and we'll go back to Don Crickey now. All right, Jerry, now for Jerry West, this is Don Crickey saying goodbye from Hawthorne's Pavilion, where the final score was the Houston Rockets 117, the Boston Celtics 102. Now stay tuned for the second half of our CBS playoff doubleheader, where the Western Conference champion Golden State Warriors go against the Seattle Supersonics. The NBA playoffs is a presentation of CBS Sports. Cher matches glitter with guest star Liberace while Rhoda's mother, Nancy Walker, and singer Linda Ronstadt add to the fun tomorrow at 7.30, 6.30 Central on CBS. May I call your magazine, my magazine, your bank statement, my bank pack statement? Still only paying two fifty a month at European American? Nope. Aha, uh -huh, I knew it. Now I only pay $1.50. Then you're getting less. Nope. Still unlimited checking, personalized checks, a free safe deposit box, and lots more. I even qualified for preferred loan rates. $1.50? I just keep $1,000 in a European American savings account earning interest. And you get bank pack for $1.50? Hey, maybe I should switch. Okay. You cook. European American. Member FDIC. Now for the grand prize! <laughs> a four-part question. Think carefully. What car gets 30 miles per gallon on the highway? Gremlin! Who's the furthest on a tank of gas? Gremlin! Has the best resale value of any small car built in America? Gremlin! And is backed by the exclusive buyer protection prize! Gremlin! Where is it? The economical AMC Gremlin. It matches my dress! Channel 2, New York. Rick Barry of the Golden State Warriors off to a sensational start in the playoffs to top off his best season ever. Keith Wilkes of the Warriors, the choice of many as the NBA's Rookie of the Year. Seven foot two inch Tom Burleson of Seattle, one of six rookies who have sparkled in the Sonics' first playoff appearance ever. And Captain Spencer Haywood of the Sonics. All key ingredients of today's Western Conference playoff game between Seattle and Golden State. You see the best in Welcome to the Seattle Coliseum for this afternoon's fourth game in the NBA Western Conference semifinal series between Golden State and Seattle. I'm Frank Lieber along with me former UCLA star Lynn Shackelford and right now it's Golden State that's got the home court advantage. Very definitely because should the Seattle Sonics lose this game they would go back to game number five in Oakland Tuesday night down three to one and it would just about assure a, a Golden State win I think in the playoffs should they win here this afternoon. If things get as rough as they were in the game between these two clubs Thursday night here in Seattle we could be in for a very tough afternoon. Players get tired of looking at one another because you play the long series against each other night after night. You get tired of feeling the same elbows and the same parts of the body. That's what they call an emotional carryover. Yes, it's getting rough between the two teams. The last two games of the series have been won by visiting teams, and that just isn't supposed to happen in the NBA, is it, Len? No, it's not, but I think it, although unlike some playoff series, this one, the home court advantage, will not be too significant, although these Seattle fans here are going to get wild this afternoon. This is a must game for the Seattle Supersonics. They need it or they fall behind three games to one. And Bill Russell and his team will be pulling out all the stops. Who wants to be treated like just another beautiful body? I got a brain. So I, Bev, get a new Hager top. It mixes and matches with Connie Hager slacks to give me a variety of ways to express my individuality. For less than $45, I'm more than a beautiful body. I'm a sex object. 
Hager slacks of Easy Care Selenese Fortrell Polyester. And now Hager tops, $25 and under. So who says the cost of looking good is going up? Thanks, Hager. Oh. <laughs> In the tradition of the world's most famous motorcycle, Harley Davidson, two more expressions of engineering excellence designed for the man who won't settle for less. The Harley Davidson SX175 and SX250 on off road machines. Take your choice. The SX175, the SX250. For the rider who demands the best, the Harley Davidson man. See the yellow pages for your AMF Harley Davidson dealer. When you talk about key players to watch in this game, I guess you have to start with Rick Berry. He has perhaps become the, the best all around basketball player in the NBA this year. Had a sensational regular season, and he hasn't slowed down in the playoffs. He averaged 30 and a half points during the regular season. He's averaging 33 now in the playoffs. And he is certainly the man that they build their entire offense around. They want to try to work the ball until they can get it to Rick Barry. And, of course, he's quite capable of scoring. He's had in the three games 39, 29, and 33. If Clifford Ray can set a screen and get him open for a jump shot from a good place on the floor, it's almost an automatic two points for Rick. Barry can do so many things with or without the basketball. He draws a lot of double teaming, but he's very adept at dumping the ball off to the open man. One of the fine passing forwards. He's very smart that when he is double teamed, he not only can score, but he has the ability to pass off, as he does here to Phil Smith, the Golden State Warrior guard, for an easy 12-footer. Tom Burleson and Spencer Haywood, the big names for Seattle. And Burleson has really come on like gangbusters here in the last month. Tommy averaged only 10 points a game during the regular season, but he now is playing most of the time at center. He's so very tall, he has a great height advantage over Clifford Ray. He's averaging 20 points a game in the playoffs in the three games so far. The Golden State does a lot of double teaming, don't they, Lynn? Much more even than the Seattle Sonics. Rick Berry double teamed here, and of course he was guarding Spencer Haywood. That left Haywood open underneath, and if you give Haywood or Burleson a shot underneath, they're going to dunk it. What about the experience factor now? Uh, Russell's got a young team. He's got six rookies. He's got only one man, Archie Clark, who's really had any playoff experience at all. Could this be the, the key factor in the series? Right. Of their 12-man roster, 12, uh, six of them are rookies. That's unusual just for them to get into the playoffs. And two of those rookies, Burleson and uh, Leonard Gray, are starters. Yes, I think it hurts them. For instance, they lost the game here Thursday night because Bill Russell said they were trying too hard. That is indicativeness, indicative of youthfulness. The rebounding statistics in the league show that Golden State is the second best uh, rebounding team in the NBA, NBA over the regular season and Seattle on the other hand is the third worst now they've got a guy in there that's at seven foot two and you wouldn't expect this to happen no you sure wouldn't you've got Tom Burleson at seven two Spencer Haywood of course is a fine rebounder and Leonard Gray is a pretty big man too weighing in at about 240 pounds but the old story in basketball is sometimes quickness can overcome height or strength and the Golden State Warriors although you would not regard Keith Wilkes and Rick Barry as great rebounding forwards Clifford Ray and those other two forwards, they do an outstanding job of rebounding. They do a fine job. Of course, they put the ball up a lot, too. They put it up more than anyone else in the NBA during the regular season, and for that reason, they get a lot of rebounds. They, lo they like to run and gun, and Seattle, if it's, uh, it's going to have a chance, I guess is going to have to slow them down and make them play their style of play. Very definitely. In fact, during the regular season, when Golden State won four of the seven encounters, they won some of the games rather easily, as they did in the first playoff game when they led at one time by 30 points with their fast break and their quickness. And for Seattle to stay in the game, they've got to start to control the tempo a little bit themselves. Warriors are the top offensive team in the NBA, averaging better than 108 points per game. That'll be something to watch. We'll be back with the tip-off in just a moment. A tiny speck of carbon black. If it were in your eye, you wouldn't know it. But Carbon Black's unique properties strengthen rubber and add thousands of miles of wear to your car's tires. And who discovered an economical way to make Carbon Black for today's tires? The same company that makes fine products for your car. The Phillips Petroleum Company. Surprised? Hey, Plunkett. You've never seen anything like these J-Wipes, boy. Car wax right in a cloth. And it's easy. Sure, they're easy. But will the shine last? Will the shine last? Jay Wives puts down more wax in the leading paste. It bonds to the finish for a shine that really lasts. You see that? <laughs> New Jay Wipes from Jay Wax. The tough wax shine in a disposable cloth. NBA playoffs will continue after this word from your local station. 
Intelligence tests are put to the test and found failing when CBS reports on the IQ myth, Tuesday night on CBS. Last year, Joel Satorius went to Venice, as hundreds of thousands of people do each year. But Joel wasn't on a holiday. He went to study the art of Venice. Joel was one of 59 young men and women, graduate students on ITT International Fellowships. Like Joel, half of them were Americans studying abroad. The others, foreign students in America. What Joel learned on his ITT fellowship will be a big help someday in the career he's chosen, teaching. The people he met learned something about him, too, and about us Americans. And that really is what these ITT fellowships are all about. Not only teaching people for a career, but teaching people about people. Channel 2, New York. Give it all you got, take your very best shot, and may the best team win. The time is now, the name of the game is action. They're on the floor and they're ready to score, so let the game begin. And let's see how the ball's going to bounce today. Welcome to NBA Playoffs, sponsored by Ford and your local Ford dealer. The closer you look, the better we look. And by AC Delco, Division of General Motors Corporation. The Seattle Supersonics, 19 straight sellout crowd, 14,000 on hand. Here as you see the starting lineups in this afternoon's NBA semifinal series playoff game. Charlie Johnson controlling the tip for the Warriors. Barry drives off to Johnson. Johnson at 24 points in the Thursday night game. That's what we were talking about. Rick Barry, who dribble drives to the basket, and if he has the man, or if they pick up on him, double team him, he'll let the open man as he did for Johnson, an easy jumper at the free throw line. At Slick Watts. Archie Clark. Rebounded by Clifford Ray. The Wilkes. Johnson fires from 16. Cleared by Leonard Gray, one of the two rookies in the starting lineup. Clark driving on Beard. Haywood on the outside. Into the big guy. Clifford Gray picks up his first personal foul, and they would like to get Clifford in foul trouble, although George Johnson, Golden State's reserve center, is outstanding also. Haywood to Burleson from the corner. Golden State leading 2 nothing as Ray sweeps him clean. Charlie Johnson. Clark trying to stay with him. Barry from 20. Hung on the lip and wouldn't fall. Watts with that distinctive gold headband. Clark ties it for Seattle at 2. Archie, of course, is a man I think they're going to have to look to an awful lot because of every one of his nine NBA seasons, he's been in the playoffs every year. Ray going up for the shot, and he's held. It'll go on Len Gray, 6'8 rookie from Long Beach State, number two draft choice of the Sonics. Ray doesn't score that much, had only three free throws for his entire scoring out for Thursday night, but can he handle himself under the boards? To look at him, you think he's a very mean person and aggressive, but he's a very nice, easygoing guy off the floor. He doesn't shoot a great deal, as you say, Frank, but he does know his strengths and he uses them well out there. Burleson, no trouble at all clearing the boards. Barry, almost coming up with a steal. Rick, the NBA statistical leader in two different individual categories. Only man to lead two categories. Steals one of them. The other free throw percentage. Clark looking for the open man. 
Watts has a clear shot. Watts usually comes off the bench. A little bit of a surprise. They started him in place of Fred Brown. Johnson. Wilkes on the rebound. Whistle. Now we'll go on Archie Clark. Keith Wilkes is an outstanding rookie. There he got an offensive rebound, and I think the most pleasant surprise of the number one draft pick of the Warriors this year, Wilkes, is that he is a good rebounder. He's averaged eight during the regular season. Sonics leading 4-3 in the early going. Here's Barry. Gray. Now, we talked about rebounding being a dominant factor before the game, and thus far in the early going, you see the Warriors controlling both boys. Wilkes shooting over Gray. That's good by Keith Wilkes. He's an outstanding player. He likes to shoot that turnaround jump shot, and when he gets in deep, you would think at 6'6", he would have trouble getting it off, but he shoots it from way behind his head, and for that reason, it's difficult to block. Gray, Archie Clark, beard out on him. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Traveling. I think they like the idea of Fred Brown, Frank, coming off the bench. That's one of the reasons why they started Watts. He is a good playmaker, but if they need scoring, you'll see Brown in there in a hurry. Rick Berry into Ray. Wilkes has the shot. That basket was possible because Tom Burleson overplayed and gambled out there, and it got beat, but he didn't intercept the pass, and therefore the Golden State had a two-on-one advantage, and Wilkes dumped it in. Seven to four, Warriors. Haywood. Spencer Haywood gets his first basket of the game. Seven six, Warriors by one. Beard, one time a Seattle Supersonic himself, back in their leaner days. Ray looking for somebody, gets it to Charlie Johnson. Nice driving layup by Johnson. Excellent play underneath by little Charlie. He's listed at only six feet. Only one other player, Calvin Murphy, is listed shorter that, than that in the NBA, and Murphy's listed at 5'9". Gray on the outside to watch. Inside to Haywood, the turnaround jumper. Whistle by Mindy Rudolph. Three seconds, apparently. Three seconds. Spencer Haywood wants to get the ball inside and underneath. He's guarded by Keith Wilkes, and that's a difficult assignment for Wilkes because Wilkes is only 6'6", 190, so Haywood has a big height and weight advantage over him of about 35 pounds. Johnny Johnson, air ball. Burleson comes down with it. To Archie Clark. Clark, at his nine years in the NBA, has never missed the playoffs. That's amazing. With four different teams, jump off, and Russell doesn't like it. The crowd here is really wild. It's 14,000 plus. They're second in professional basketball in attendance right here in Seattle behind New York. And they'll get on every call that goes against their team and on every player on the other team. Baird gets it down to Barry. Warriors lead 9-6. Collision there with Gray. No foul called. Charlie Johnson lost it. Sonics have two team fouls. The Warriors won. 7.45 left to play first period. Archie Clark picked up by Beard. Gray with Barry hanging on him. That's a play why, one of the reasons why Rick Barry was able to lead the NBA in steals. He overplays and gambles. That time he got in a little bit too heavy, and he grabbed Leonard Gray on the arm. Well, this crowd reacts to Barry, doesn't it? <laughs> Negative. Watts has it knocked out of his hands, regains it. Archie Clark. Beard is on him. Over Beard. Wilkes comes down with the rebound. Watch it. He doesn't have the weight, but he comes down with his share of rebounds. <laughs> Wilkes with the shot, and Ray on the tip and try. And the whistle with a foul underneath. 21. Hold. Who's called? Foul is called on Clark. That's three team fouls against Seattle, two on the Warriors. Beard. To Keith Wilkes. Wilkes clear at the free throw line. Two. He's going to make that shot. During the regular season, he averaged 14 points a game, and in the playoffs so far, Keith Wilkes in three, three games is averaging 12 a game. He's got six right now. Warriors lead it 11 to 6. Slim Watts trying to get Roos. No ball. Watts on the rebound. Great. Missed the shot. Curtis 
Jackson with the tip in, no basket. Basket will not count. Got a foul in here. Foul, I believe, on Beard. Got a foul. Butch Beard. Butch Beard it is. You heard uh, Mindy Rudolph made the call. And we'll look at it again here, Lynn. Well, Leonard Gray had a shot there that he normally would make nine times out of ten. Beard picks up a lot of fouls. He's fouled out nine times in the 82 games in the regular season. That's his first. Warriors leading the Sonics 11 to 6 with six minutes and 49 seconds left to play in the first period here at Seattle. Ford announces a no-nonsense $250 off the sticker price on not just any new car, but America's best-selling newcomer, Ford Granada. In a limited edition you can order now, specially equipped with new exterior trim, a new bench seat and vinyl door trim. Also $250 off on limited edition Granadas with options like air conditioning and power steering. Comes in three feature colors in two and four-door models. Quantities are limited, so see your Ford dealer in order fast. Ford means value. Look close and compare. Now, Irwin Allen, the maker of the Poseidon Adventure, brings you his latest blockbuster, The Towering Inferno. Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, William Holden, Faye Dunaway, Fred Astaire, Susan Blakely, Richard Chamberlain, Jennifer Jones, O.J. Simpson, Robert Vaughn, and Robert Wagner. The Towering Inferno. Rated PG. Winner of three Academy Awards, now at Flagship Theaters. Remind you, as you look at Bill Russell talking to his young Sonics, that tomorrow on CBS will bring you another playoff doubleheader featuring the fifth games of two first-round series. At 1 p.m. Eastern time, the doubleheader will begin with game five of the series between Buffalo and Washington. That's tied at two games apiece and will be followed at 3.30 by the fifth game of the Western Conference matchup between Chicago and Kansas City, Omaha. That's also tied at two games apiece. That's tomorrow beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time here on CBS. Bill Russell, himself a veteran of 165 playoff games. Boy, you know, in those 165 games, he averaged almost 25 rebounds a game. What an incredible statistic. Great performer. He's done an outstanding job. This is his second season here in Seattle as coach and general manager, and he's got him in the playoffs this year, their first time in their history. He's also got Fred Brown in the lineup for the first time, and that's Brown, number 32, handling the basketball, guarded by Beard. He can get very, very hot. Burleson trying to go up for the shot. The basket counts. Well, I tell you, they they talk about Burleson out here. He is now the club's leading scorer here in the playoffs. And Russell talks about his great attitude that he really wants to play basketball. You ever see a skinny 240 pounder? You're looking at him. Last year at North Carolina State, where he led the Wolf back to an NCAA title, he was listed at 7'4. And in my opinion, he looks closer to that than he does at 7'2, which they list him at now. Warriors by two as Beard brings it down. Ray in the high post, guarded by Burleson. Burleson blocked the pass, enabling Gray to make the steal. Fred Brown. Brown has gone 40 points a couple of times this year. In fact, last year he scored 58 points in a game against the Warriors during the regular season. Burleson makes a move over Ray. Five points for Burleson, and the score is tied at 11. The game has started kind of slowly, but now it's starting to pick up. They're going into Burleson a little bit more, and of course, he's been averaging 20 points a game. They should look for him, and with Fred Brown, they should have a lot more offense, that being Seattle. Charlie Johnson, rather unheralded member of the Warriors, into Ray. Oh, foul is called on Spencer Haywood, away from the ball. That's 14 fouls against the Sonics. Four also against uh, the Golden State Warriors. Nice fake by Barry. Not hitting in the early going. Good outward pass to Brown. Feeding Clark. And Seattle has the lead, 13-11. We said the Golden State's the team that likes to run, but that was a good fast break by Seattle. They'll take it if they can get it. Wilkes. Ray on the rebound. Burleson and a foul on Burleson and he went six feet in the air. He thought he had all of the ball that time but Mendy Rudolph said no. Outstanding offensive rebound by Clifford Gray. One great thing about the improvement of Burleson over the season is in the early part of the season he would get himself in foul trouble a lot. 
but he has been out of foul trouble in both this series and the series that they won against the Detroit Pistons, and he thought he blocked that one cleanly, but he might have gotten Clifford on the arm. Warriors down by two. Five minutes, 19 seconds left to play first period here at the Seattle Coliseum. Now they get one more. Three to make two situation. As we're now the penalty, Al Adel's looking on. He's not very happy about his free throw shooting. He gets the third one, however, to narrow the margin to one. That's two points for Ray, both on free throws, obviously. Clark off to Brown. Comes back to Brown. Tries it again. Wilkes with the rebound. Good outlet pass to Johnson. One on one on Clark. Good touch by Johnson. Played his entire basketball career in the Bay Area. High school, college, and now pro. Warriors have the lead back by one. 14-13, the big guy. Burleson getting inside on Ray and drops it in. Pretty agile for a man his side. He's got a variety of shots. And he can put the ball on the floor if he has two for one or two dribbles. And he did then, and he did it well. He's got seven points, 15-14. Sonics. Ray has given away five inches to Burleson. He's almost 6'9". Johnson. Burleson with another rebound. He gets it out of there fast to Brown. Brown driving. Whistle and a foul. Beard was riding with him. He definitely, when he went to the basket, was trying to draw the foul. Charlie Johnson really had no alternative other than to foul him. Brown is now an outstanding offensive one-on-one -on -one player. You get him in a situation like that, he's either going to score or be fouled. Bill Russell's always very calm over there on the bench. Brown has been very cold from the, well, from the floor and the free throw line of the series. From the floor, particularly, only 35% of his shots. George Johnson has come into the game, spelling Ray at center. That makes it 17-14, Sonics. First two points of the game for Fred Brown. Beard. Brown on him. Off to George Johnson. Barry. Traveling, Traveling call. Now, one of the reasons the Sonics have stayed with him is they've contained Barry very well. Spencer Haywood, who is guarding Barry, is doing a pretty good job. He's forcing him to pass off. Barry would like to shoot. That's his first choice. Here's Haywood. Trying to get it inside to Gray. Rick Barry is guarding Leonard Gray, and as we said earlier, that puts Wilkes on Haywood. Here's a timeout with three minutes and 46 seconds left to play in the first period. The Sonics leading the Warriors 17 to 14 and the capacity crowd here in Seattle loving every minute of it. Gee, aren't Frenchmen terrific? Yeah, why can't guys back home dress like that? So slim, so rich. Oh, he's coming over. It's easy to be mistaken for a Frenchman in a brigade shirt from Arrow. Slim, trim, very European. Bonjour, mademoiselles. Parlez-vous um, American? He's American. You really think so? Brigade from Arrow. No wonder American men look so good. Now comes Miller time. The longest six seconds of your life just turned out to be the quickest quarter mile of the day. So head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you got the time, if you got the time, we got the beer. Harry, your wife's car is due for an oil change and a new AC oil filter. I can't be, Lou. Excuse me, hon. Uh, my wife doesn't drive that much. Harry, even with today's shorter trips and slower speeds, your oil can still get dirty. That's why your owner's manual calls for a change. In terms of mileage or time, whichever comes first. Uh, and tell your wife to think months, not just miles. Uh, hon? Like who said, Harry, think months, not just miles. And think AC oil filters for quality engine protection. <laughs> 
Ready to go back to work here at the Seattle Coliseum. Sonics will throw it in underneath their offensive hoop. Gray looking for someone to throw it to. Finally gets it into Burleson, and he held it too long. Five seconds. Good defense by the Golden State Warriors that time. They were trying to get the ball, obviously, a little lob pass into Burleson underneath. George Johnson, who is taller than Clifford Ray and has longer reach, might be able to better contain Tom Burleson than Ray. George Johnson was sensational coming off the bench Thursday night at 14 rebounds in 17 minutes. He can really vacuum those boards. Beard holding up three fingers to indicate the out-of-bounds play. Comes into Rick Barry. Guarded very close by Gray. Gets the pick. Can't hit. Barry is cold. Very cold. He's off to an awful start. Usually he likes to hit his first two or three shots. Ball batted away and out-of-bounds by Charlie Johnson. Sonics to throw it in. Now, on offense for the Warriors, they can go to other people to score, but as we said, their offense revolves around Barry. They want him to have the ball and be a threat to either score, and of course, then he can pass off. Brown, driving on Beard, gets it back to Burleson from 18 feet. Nice touch for the big guy. Nine points. I don't think Bill Russell wants him to make a habit of taking that shot, but he is capable of hitting it on occasion. Barry trying to get inside to Wilkes, driving on Haywood. Wilkes, two. He got eight points. He's got eight points. He looks good. At UCLA, they used to call him smooth as silk, and he still looks pretty smooth in the NBA. He's one of ten UCLA graduates playing in the NBA. Brown with the miss shot. Barry, the beard. Beard driving. Wilkes over Gray. Gray comes down with it. Clark, two on two situation, and Archie pops. Dip and try by Brown is no good, and Wilkes has the next one. Charlie Johnson. Charlie Johnson. Good little basket by Charlie, the man they call CJ Golden State. I think Golden State's trying to increase the speed of the game now. They're trying to move the ball up the floor a little more rapidly. That's more suited to their style, and it would bother Seattle more. Houston is eight points now. He's the top scorer for Golden State. Gray trying to drive, and uh, Leonard Gray gets an offensive foul. Well, Rick got his hand in there pretty good, but they didn't call it. Yeah, Rick's always trying to make a steal. Leonard tried to push that hand away. He does not put the ball on the floor and go to the basket real well. Leonard Gray, the fine rookie from Cal State Long Beach, but he is an excellent shooter. He has excellent shot selection as well. Golden State trying to get loose. Johnson. Gray clears it again. Archie Clark. Pat Skinner, who just came into the game, gets his first bucket. Another of the fine rookies. Boy, you talk about the, the future. I think Seattle has got some kind of NBA future. They do, too. And right now, they look like they've got a future in the playoffs. They're looking good. They've got three rookies in there right now against Golden State. They lead the Warriors by three. George Johnson. Barry. Got the shot off just in time. Picked off by Wilkes. Hands it back to Beard. Johnson. Can't hit it. Taken away by Charlie Johnson. He's all over the place. However, we got a foul call. Foul will go on Johnson. It's going to be a backcourt foul. So we'll go to the free throw line. Golden State right now, Frank, is very confused out there. And there's only one man that can straighten that out, in my opinion, for them, and that is Rick Barry. He's going to have to take over the offense for them, get the ball. He's going to have to start making some of those jump shots that he's missed. Tab Skinner, who came out of Maryland Eastern Shore, that uh, school that went to the NIT and did well last year, has two points. He is a player that Bill Russell really has taken a liking to. He hustles, he works hard, he is not outstanding in one facet of the game, but he is a good all-around player. Good defensive player, especially considering he's a rookie. 54 seconds left to play in the first period here at Seattle. Sonics lead it 21-18. Lead by four. And Skinner gets the penalty. 
to make it 23-18. Al Adels looking on. Barry, guarded by Skinner. Nice fake. Draws the foul. With Haywood out of the game, that means that Cal Calvin Skinner has the dubious honor of guarding Rick Barry. He was definitely trying to draw the foul with his fakes, and he finally got Skinner to go into the air. Once he did that, then he went up for the shot, and he knew he was going to get the, the whistle blown. You're looking at the best free throw shooter in the history of professional basketball. Rick Barry on his career has averaged almost 89%, just a shade better than Bill Sharma. Of course, he led the league in percentage this year right at 90. 23-20, Sonics by three. 35 seconds to go. Brown dumps it off to Burleson. Nice block by George Johnson. Beard. The Mullins, who's come into the game. I think it's a good idea to put Jeff Mullins in. He's a veteran with the Golden State Warriors, and it looks like they, because they are confused, they need some experience out there. Mullins has been instrumental in the playoffs, although he has had for him a bad regular season. 15 seconds left on the shot clock, 20 seconds in the period. Mullins over to Wilkes. No, 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 no. Three, two, one. It's a very close call on by referee Paul Mahalik. The foul was on Freddie Brown. Paul Mahalik, of course, is in his fifth NBA season as an official. Brown was trying to keep Keith Wilkes, who is a right-hander but goes very well to his left side, which is indicative, I think, of all outstanding players. They can go well either way. 23-21, Sonics. Wilkes can narrow it to one. 15 seconds left to play in the first quarter. That's 10 points for Wilkes. He's had an outstanding period. Clark, eight seconds. George Johnson got his foot into the ball. It'll be the Sonics to throw in with five seconds left to play in the period. Were they running together? Golden State, while their offense has not been as good as it usually is, they led the NBA in points, or average points per game, 108 this year. Their defense so far has looked very good. All right, five seconds left in the first period. As the Sonics tab Skinner, well, now it's going to be Brown, I guess, to throw it in. Let's see. Now, now they decide on Skinner. Into Clark. Trying to drive and shoot over Mullins. He That's the end of the first period here at the Seattle Coliseum with the Supersonics leading the Golden State Warriors by a score of 23 to 22. Most products men use have tough, masculine names. You know what the name of my shampoo is? Johnson's Baby Shampoo. When you wash your hair as often as I do, it doesn't make sense to use a harsh shampoo. I need one that's gentle, like Johnson's. A shampoo for babies has got to be gentle. And Johnson's gets your hair really clean, so it looks fuller. That's how I like your hair, full and soft. Johnson's Baby Shampoo is gentle enough to use every day. From Johnson & Johnson. Announcing not just a sale, but a way to get a special price on America's best sellers. A best sellers sale at your Ford dealer. Get a special price on a specially equipped Mustang II, America's best selling small luxury car. On Maverick, traditionally America's best selling four door compact. Or choose Pinto, America's top selling small economy car. Your Ford dealer has been given a special incentive to give you a good buy on America's best selling lowest price lineup. Ford means value. See your local Ford dealer. Look close and compare. When you come to the Bell System, business communication is a lot more than just telephones. It's research and development. Supply. Installation. Operations. Maintenance. And the Bell System takes responsibility for all of it. 100%. Total responsibility from the Bell System. Who knows more about phones than the phone company? 
Frank Lieber with Lynn Shackelford at the Seattle Coliseum ready to go in the second period of this NBA Western Conference semifinal playoff game. And the tip is controlled by the Warriors. who are down by one. Nice feet underneath to George Johnson who stuffs it for two. Well, the Warriors break out here at the gate like they did in the first period on top. Pass to Burleson. Ripped on the arm by Johnson. And he'll go to the line with two shots. Burleson at nine points in the first period. Pretty good quarter. He looked very good. As tall as he is, when he goes up and starts going to the basket, you've got to foul him, hopefully before that. But they called it that he was going to the basket. So Johnson picks up his first personal foul. Clifford Ray is on the bench with two personals. Trying to break the tie here. Not a bad free throw shooter either. He's very good. Of course, he was on the 1972 United States Olympic basketball team. Butch Beard. Slick Watts all over him. Wilkes. Back to Beard. But on the left side now. Barry, by the way, in the first quarter had just two free throws. Did not have a basket. Mullins with a rather wild hook shot there. Cleared by Skinner. This is Skinner. Skinner has six points coming off the bench. Just about the time you don't think he's a very good shooter. He hits a long one like that. Sonics by three. Beard. That's his first basket. 27-26 Seattle. Watt says he wears that headband to keep the hair out of his eyes. <laughs> no, I don't think so. He's only one of two players that wears the headband now. Jimmy Walker of Kansas City Omaha being the other. Burleson with three seconds on the shot clock. Almost a desperation throw there. Beard. Over Skinner. Nice rebound by Mullins. Excellent position under the basket. Warriors 28, Sonics 27. Mullins got him on the arm. A little foul that Jeff Mullins just accidentally reached in there and hit him with, but he didn't like it. And it's not going to have anything happen except Seattle will get the ball out of bounds. Haywood had only two points in the first period, misses. Barry with the rebound, shovels it off to Beard. Back to Barry. <laughs> Considering Rick Barry is not having a good game to date, the Warriors are doing quite well to lead by one point. Of course, Seattle is probably saying the same thing, that they're doing well to trail by only one point, with Spencer Haywood scoring only two. Barry has had 39, 29, and 33 points in the first three playoff games. Watts trying to move on Mullins to Haywood, the captain of the Sonics. But he's done everything but be with a championship team. That's his goal. He's fouled by Wilkes. 21. Now that was the only time Tom Burleson will leave the high, the low post when he comes out and then Spencer Haywood gets the ball underneath against the shorter Wilkes and Wilkes had to foul him that time. Watch the Skinner. The big guy, Burleson. Scott scraping hook shot, perfect. He had a trouble adjusting, Burleson did, the early part of the season because the lane is 16 feet wide in pro ball and only 12 feet in college. But now you can see he's adjusting to it, using, utilizing that hook shot well again. Burleson has got 13 points. Foul called. Spencer Haywood picks up his second personal foul. He is guarding Keith Wilkes, and they've got Talvin Skinner on Barry. Mullins. Beautiful turnaround jumper by Mullins, who for four years led the Warriors in scoring. Look there over the shoulder of Bill Russell. Burleson trying to pass it to Watts underneath. Break away for Barry. That's his first field goal of the game. Four points for Barry. Watts. Skinner. Trying to fake Barry out of position. Back to Watts, driving the way. Nice arch on it, but wouldn't fall. Wilkes on the rebound. Warriors by three. Layup missed by Beard. Skinner going the other way. Three on two. 
Give it go. And foul called on Johnson. George Johnson, who leads the Warriors in block shots. Initially, when I heard the whistle, I thought it might be goaltending, but that certainly was not goaltending on that play. Eight minutes and 31 seconds left to play in the first half, and Golden State holds a three-point edge. Michelin, Michelin. Dear Michelin, I'm absolutely amazed at the difference your steel belted radials make. Road adhesion is unbelievable, and traction on cornering is out of sight. I plan to drive on nothing but Michelins in the future. Ever since we invented the steel belted radial, Americans have been sold on Michelin. Prove it to yourself. Dr. Buckland did. Michelin, the steel belted radial leader. We made it first. We make it last. American men, wake up. This is 1975. Break loose in the Four Trail Freedom Look. It's getting away, breaking loose from the old uptight way of dressing. A&S has it in these leisure suits from John Alexander and Levi Panatella. They're made with Four Trail polyester. That's all you need to know. So have fun. Break loose in the Freedom Look. The Four Trail Freedom Look at the Abraham and Strauss nearest you. Out of the middle of all this playoff action, CBS is a special attraction for sports fans in the form of one of the most talked about events of the year. We're talking, of course, about the quarter of a million dollar tennis challenge match between Jimmy Connors and John Newcomb. The war of words is just about over and the rest of it is going to be resolved on the tennis court next Saturday. Who's the best tennis player in the world? Find out with the rest of us next Saturday beginning at 3.30 Eastern Time on CBS. Jimmy Connors and John Newcomb go at it in Las Vegas. Skinner on the free throw line for the Sonics, who trail 32-29. See, we got any more substitutions, uh, Lynn? Jim Fox has come in to replace Burleson at center, and that's exactly what I thought Al Adels would counter. He took George Johnson out. George Johnson did an excellent job on Burleson, and he has brought Clifford Ray back in to play Jim Fox. Now, Fox is the only other player besides Clark on the Seattle team to have had previous playoff experience. Skinner has seven points. Warriors by two. Beard guarded by Watts. Watts was not drafted, by the way. Good touch by Mullins underneath. Jeff has six. Brown trying to get around Beard. Made a move for the baseline and changed his mind. Hayward to Fox. Brown. Foul as he got it away by Beard. It looks pretty obvious that during the last time out, Coach Bill Russell told the Sonics to move the ball a little bit more because they moved it quite well around the perimeter of the court. And the foul, of course, was on the shot. A lot of people might say that he fouled him after the shot, but his act of shooting was not completed. Therefore, he was fouled in the act of shooting. Fred Brown. Brown was fifth in steals in the NBA this season and 15th in scoring with an average of 21 points per game, but he's been very inconsistent in the playoffs and did not start today's game. He's had only one good playoff game. He shot 12 out of 19 one more, one more. in that one, and that was the full Seattle victory when they won 100 to 99 in Oakland. 34 31. 34 32. Brown has four points. Seven fifty-five left to play in the half. Barry has Skinner on him. Underneath the Wilkes over Haywood. What? Gets it up point to play Brown. Brown having trouble controlling and fouled apparently by Barry. Yeah, Barry doesn't say anything on the call. He knows very definitely he tried to foul him. He's getting a little bit frustrated, and I think they're probably going to take him out of the game. That was an obvious foul. He had no chance to steal the ball, and sometimes when you are frustrated, you make fouls like that. It's for him an awful first half so far, and I'm sure he's quite upset about it. Derek Dickey's the man that's going to come in there. One plus one here for Fred Brown. And another. Sometimes in a player like Barry's case, if you take him out, 
Let him sit on the bench and watch the action. Collect his thoughts a little bit and cool off. He can come back in and hit four or five jumpers in a row. We've seen it happen many times. That ties it up at 34. Beard. Watts trying to get to him, took a swipe at him, and I think caught him right across the face. Slick Watts says there's no way that I fouled the man. Is it a backcourt foul or not? No, it will not be a backcourt foul, obviously. <laughs> I can see where Slick Watts, was, Slick Watts had a little argument with the official there. Both of them, I think, got their hands on each other. Discussion going on now. They have a 20 second injury timeout. You're allowed in each half, each team is allowed one of those. Charlie Johnson has come back into the game for the Warriors. Number 10. Guarded by Brown. Oh, he is slippery and quick. This Golden State team has just completely turned around from last year. So it's very slow. There's very good help baseline by the center, Jim Fox. That's exactly what he's supposed to do. When a man goes baseline, as Wilkes did around Haywood, Fox got over there and got good position and drew the offensive foul. That's the second personal on Keith. Watts guarded by Mullins, the Fox in the high post. Brown from 18. Pete comes it through. If he warms up, look out. So far, they have been able to contain the Seattle guards, but Brown is capable of getting hot at any time. Sonics have the lead back by two. Mullins trying to tie it. Oh, I tell you, got a little physical under the boards there as Haywood went sprawling. Timeout is being called by the Golden State Warriors. The other night here, we had four near fist fights. The officials finally had to call both coaches together. Say the next guy that raises his fist, we're going to be thrown out of the game. Hey, Detroit, how about a special offer for guys who need big cars? Ford presents a new limited edition Ford that's sticker priced at least $332 less than full-size Fords have been. It comes with automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, steel-belted radials, and more. There's also a lower price limited edition of America's favorite full-size wagon. But quantities are limited, so order now for best selection. Ford means value. See your local Ford dealer. Look close and compare. This is an antiperspirant spray called Sure. It's different. Really. Most antiperspirant sprays go on wet and oily compared to Sure, which goes on dry. And Sure keeps you dry. Prove it under your own two arms. Try Sure on your left side and the spray you like best on your right side. If you're like most people, your left side will convince your right side. You'll be drier. We're sure. Tuesday night, the NBA on CBS brings you game four of the Eastern Conference playoff series between the defending champion Boston Celtics and the Houston Rockets. The young Houston club is a tough uphill battle against the quick, versatile Celtics featuring four NBA All-Stars who led them to the league's best regular season record. That's Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 Central, 6 Pacific Time here on CBS. In case you didn't uh, join us until uh, just recently, earlier this afternoon, Houston defeated Boston in Houston, 117 to 102. Makes that stand uh, two games to one. Boston. A couple substitutions. Tom Burleson was given a very, very brief rest. He comes back in at center, and Rick Barry for the Warriors comes back in. Sonics lead by two. Barry still. Having troubles hitting, he really wanted to hit that shot. That could have got him going if he had switched that one. Fred Brown. Derek Dickey has checked into the game for the first time for Golden State. That's good. Ten points for Brown. Sonics by four. I don't believe they've been ahead by more than four. Golden State's been up by six on a couple of occasions. Veteran Jeff Mullins out of Duke. Charlie Johnson driving on Watts. Ray going up for the rebound, and he got him on the hands. I believe. Quick watch, watch. He was a little man underneath. That sometimes you can grab a guy's wrist, and the officials don't catch it. But that time, Paul Mahalik was right on top of it. 
Clifford Ray. Only one out of three at the free throw line so far. Is back to try again. Ray, of course, came to the Warriors from Chicago and is one of the driving forces that turned the Warriors into winners. But a very, very good trade, off-season trade for the Warriors when they traded away Nate Thurman and they received not only Clifford Ray, but a sum of cash and a number one draft pick. They got a lot of years in the exchange, too. Very definitely. And uh, he has really made them from a slow team into a quick team. And, of course, when you have players like Barry, they like to run. And they haven't been doing that this afternoon very much. Sonics lead by two. Six minutes left to play in the first half. Burleson to the high post. Ray is on him. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Five seconds. Brown from 22 feet. Now he's starting to warm up, as we suggested he can. He's an outstanding outside shooter. Mullins, who was trying to fight through a screen, kind of got hit in the face that time, but he looks okay. That's 12 points for Fred Brown. Mullins. Dickey with the rebound. The next one for Seattle. The Brown. Barry out quickly on him. Brown played his college ball in Iowa. Burleson to Watts. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Brown again. Two. Al Lattles is going to call timeout. I think you're going to have to see a substitution. Somebody has got to get out there and pick up Fred Brown. He's starting to get a little too hot. Standing ovation for the Sonics, led by their coach Bill Russell, who welcomes them to the bench. 42 to 36, Sonics lead with five minutes to go in the first half. If you drive, nobody has to tell you the price of gasoline is not what it used to be. So for your benefit, there's STP gas treatment. If you have a dirty carburetor, STP can help restore the precious mileage you're probably losing. Because STP gas treatment helps clean gas-heating dirty carburetors and helps keep them clean. Play it safe. Put STP gas treatment in every tank full. The way prices have climbed, you can't afford a dirty carburetor. I'm telling you, Jake, pound for pound, he was the best man I ever saw. Yeah, Joe, he should have been champ. He had a lift. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, what is it, kid? I want to be a fighter. Only oh, you do, huh? Well, who does that? What's your name, Sonny? Uh, Dempsey, sir. Dempsey? Ah! Dempsey. And I suppose your first name is Jack. Yes, sir, it is. Jack Dempsey. Oh, well, that's different. Another Jack Dempsey. Hey, Jawbone, what do you say you go a couple of rounds with uh, Mr. Jack Dempsey? I'd enjoy some. When you've got a well-known name, people expect a lot. We've got a beer named after the city that means beer, Old Milwaukee. It's a tough name to live up to, but Old Milwaukee is one of the fastest growing major beers in the country. Old Milwaukee beer tastes as great as its name. Back to work. Golden State. Charlie Johnson across the center line. His team trails by six now as Fred Brown has Really gotten hot. He has 12 points here in the second period, 14 on the game. And Barry still having his troubles finding the hoop. Beard. Nice tip in by Ray. Gives him six on the game. 42-38. Butch Beard was put into the game primarily now for defensive purposes against Fred Brown. We'll see what kind of job he can do. Either Butch Beard or Phil Smith, who I'm surprised hasn't been used today so far for Golden State are the people that normally guard Fred Brown. Foul is on Burleson, his second. Brought Russell to his feet. Barry, Skinner on him. He was fouled. <laughs> Barry says yes, 14,000 people here in Seattle say no. Salvin Skinner is showing that he's got some defensive talent. He does get faked into the air very definitely. He tried to avoid the foul. Whether he did or not, who knows? Barry has four points. Only one basket, that on a layup. And he's now three out of three from the free throw line. 42 to 39, Sonics. 
90% free throw shooter on the year. Number one in the league in steals. Second in scoring. Fifth in assists. And having his problems today is Mr. Barry. Sonics by two. Brown, 25-footer. Oh, he is hot. It will count. When you're hot, everything goes in. Some people would say it's a soft touch, and Fred Brown would be one of them. That was an unusual shot for it to drop. Butch Beard picks up on the play his third personal foul. And as we said, Butch has a tendency to get in foul trouble, and he might, guarding this very hot Fred Brown. That is 17 points for Fred Brown. Make it 15 points. Sonics by five, 45-40. Four minutes left to play in the half. Barry still can't find the range. He seems to be short, Rick does, on most of his message, a little bit short as he was then. Clear man is Skinner. Got it anyway. He thought maybe he shouldn't have waited that long, Lynn. No, he couldn't decide whether to go up strong or whether to fake, and he faked and hung in the air, and it turned out pretty well. Sonics by seven for the first time. Assistant coach for Seattle there is Bob Hopkins, who is a coach at Xavier in Louisiana, brought uh, Slick Watts. Yep, he coached him there. Him. He coached there for five years. Al Adels is completing his fifth full season as the coach of the Golden State Warriors. He's never had a losing season. He has missed the playoffs only once, and that was last year. And this year, of course, with their 48 wins, they had the best record in the Western Conference. And you would have to assume that they would be the favorites to win this playoff series. They lead it two games to one. Now let's see if we can listen in. That's the fellow they called the destroyer back in his playing days. He was a pretty rough customer. Very rough, and if there is a fight that breaks out out here on the floor this afternoon, you'll see Al Adel sprint out on the floor, not to get involved, but to break it up. Sonics lead by seven for the first time this afternoon, with three minutes and 43 seconds left to play in the first half. They need this game bad to tie the series at two games apiece. I think it's imperative that Seattle, if they can stay in this playoff series, needs to win this afternoon. Go back for that fifth game down three to one in Oakland Tuesday night, and you'd be in a lot of trouble. Game five is Tuesday in Oakland. As Lynn mentioned, game six Thursday back here in Seattle, and a seventh game, if necessary, would be Saturday in Oakland. Wilkes has sure been on the bench for a long time here in the second quarter for Golden State. He had an outstanding first quarter, Wilkes did. He's not in foul trouble either. Skinner, number 22, guarded closely by Barry. Brown is being guarded by Beard. Beard's got three fouls on him. Watts moving here on Johnson, trying to set the screen for Brown. Shooting over Beard. Well, he probably missed one. Dickey coming down with the rebound. Johnson. It's a pick from Ray. Up over the backboard and out of bounds. Another Golden State Warriors shot that seems to be short. This is a smart. Sometimes when you're short, you've got to compensate. Shoot the ball a little bit longer. Maybe jump a little higher on your jump shot. Use your legs more. Then you'll probably shoot it long. Burleson in the high post. Handing off to Brown. Got it. There's a man that doesn't have to worry about his shot right now. Anything he does, any way he shoots it, it's usually going to go in. 19 points for Brown, all but two here in the second quarter. Dickey has it. 49-42. Sonics leading with two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Watch. Burleson guarded by Ray. Ten seconds on the shot clock. They're just looking for Fred Brown now. It's pretty obvious. That one tipped away, picked up by Charlie Johnson. Dickey, who broke loose for four and a half. And a foul for traveling. As we said, their leader of the Warriors is Rick Barry. He is having an awful first half, and it is rubbing off on the rest of the team now. They're all starting to look a little bit confused as Dickey traveled with the ball. Charles Dudley has come into the game for Golden State. He has not played much in the playoffs. Number 15. I'm really surprised he comes in instead of Phil Smith, but again, it's to try to defend against Fred Brown. Haywood driving on Dickey. 
Pretty soon Al Alice may put on a uniform to try to stop Fred Brown. He is really hot. First foul on Dickey. We're in the penalty on both sides here. A lot of people might be saying that Spencer Haywood is not having a good Haywood playoff series. Wow. Haywood is averaging 19 points a game, however. He's doing a good job of rebounding, and he's trying to play the hard defense. He's done a fine job, regardless of whether he's guarding Barry or Dickey or Wilkes on defense. That was only his third point of the game. <laughs> 51 42. Sonics with their biggest lead. Dudley hands off to Ray, trying to get around Burleson. Like trying to scale a mountain. Johnson. Well, things just won't go down on Golden State. And credit good defense by Seattle. They're not giving up any open shots either. Haywood. Whistle. personal fouls on Rick Barry and he'll come out of the game. He has got to be a little frustrated right now. I would say so. We'll see what happens in the second half. Rick Barry has said on CBS that you don't stop the great ones. They stop themselves. I classify him as a great one so it'll be interesting to see what he does and how he reacts in the second half. Haywood on the line. Barry has just one basket down on a layup and four free throws. Haywood now with five points. And the Sonics with an 11 point lead. 53 to 42. Golden State hasn't been able to buy a basket here in the last five minutes. This is Dudley. Nice move. Oh, That'll surprise a few people. He's, he's spinning around like a top. He used to play right here at the University of Washington, so he's quite familiar to these Seattle fans. Just over a minute left to play in the first half. Skinner gets it inside to Burleson. Big hook. Nice hook. Good ball. That'll be a climbing foul over the back on Calvin Skinner. He tried to climb over Keith Wilkes. His third personal foul, and it'll be free throw time, in fact, for Keith Wilkes. Wilkes had an outstanding first period, scored 10 points. Keith Wilkes at UCLA ranks at an NBA, uh, UCLA team record for free throw percentage in one season last year. He shot 87%. And he comes into the NBA and he dropped down to only 73% this year in regular season. And you saw him miss that first one there. And a lot of fans are going to cheer for John Drew, obviously. But out here, Wilkes is a runaway choice as the rookie of the year. 53-45, Sonics. Into the big guy. Archie Clark over Ray. Watts. Haywood. Well, they have taken over control of the backboards, and therefore they're getting some very good percentage shots. Second effort that time by Haywood. Whistle and a foul under the basket. Two, three with the body. Archie Clark picks up the foul. You're going to have one plus one for little Charlie Dudley. For Clark, that's his third personal foul. Seattle is playing very good basketball right now. They're very aggressive. Fifty-five, forty-seven. Sonics leading with 30 seconds left to play in the half. Clark driving on Dudley. Dudley held him. Archie Clark is a very difficult player to handle one on one. You don't want him to go around you, and yet he's spaky enough that he can go around most people. So Dudley, rather than have him go around him, tried to hold him. But he still went around him. Picked up the foul also. One plus one. Mark has had a rather amazing career. He's been with four different clubs, but every year they've been in the playoffs. He takes great pride with that stat. Ten-point lead for the Sonics. Jolly Johnson gets it across to Dickey. 
20 seconds left to play in the half. Dudley taking a look at the shot clock, which shows 10 seconds. It's two seconds ahead of the game clock. Wilkes, 25 footer. Watts comes down with it, two seconds to go, and that's it. Well, they ran it down, Golden State did, but they once again did not get a very good shot. And that has probably been what's wrong with them here in the first half. Seattle Supersonics of Bill Russell taking charge in the second period and leading by 10 at halftime. You'll see the best in basketball when you watch the NBA. When you watch the NBA on CBS. Ford announces a no-nonsense $250 off the sticker price on not just any new car, but America's best-selling newcomer, Ford Granada. In a limited edition you can order now, specially equipped with new exterior trim, a new bench seat and vinyl door trim. Also $250 off unlimited edition Granadas with options like air conditioning and power steering. Comes in three feature colors in two and four door models. Quantities are limited, so see your Ford dealer in order fast. Ford means value. Look close and compare. Okay, John. I'm John Havlicek, and I'm six feet five inches. Trying to reach the rim, okay? Jonathan Hadley is four feet two inches, but we're both part of the new NBA Special Olympics basketball program for mentally retarded youngsters. I'm a coach, and Jonathan's learning very fast. Right, Jonathan? All right. For information on playing or coaching, please write Special Olympics, Washington, D.C. Frank Lieber with Lynn Shackelford at the Seattle Coliseum. We're at halftime of this capacity crowd of 14,000 enjoying what they're seeing right now as the Seattle Supersonics moving out in the second period lead the Golden State Warriors by a score of 57 to 47. And as we mentioned, Rick Barry having his problems for Golden State for the first time in the playoffs. Barry has had just one field goal, that on a layup, and has hit four out of four free throws for six points. That's one of the reasons that his team is down by a total of 10 points. Barry, of course, finished second in the NBA scoring race during the regular season. And up until this game, he's averaged 33 points in Golden State's three playoff games so far. Rick also is one of sports' more outspoken figures, and neither he nor his wife are doing anything to diminish that reputation, as Ken Squire reports. The Golden State Warriors' Rick Barry this season led the NBA in free throw percentage in steals. He was second in scoring average. Rick Berry, a man of whom more has been written than perhaps any other player in NBA history, but also is least understood. Rick, over the years, you've been one of the most maligned people in professional sports. You've been called an opportunist, selfish. Some have called you one time or another a deserter. How does one handle all of that? Well, uh, for me to say that it doesn't bother me would be uh, ridiculous. Uh, it does bother you. And mainly because the people who wrote those things never picked up the telephone and called me and asked me my side of the story. They just assumed certain things and they went out and wrote uh, articles based upon, let's say, hearsay. But the things that were said about you were the kind of things that crush people. What kind of advice could you give someone who was facing those kind of problems or even one of them? Well, I don't really feel that you can let things like that bother you. Uh, you have an objective, I think, and my objective when I play sports is to be the best that I possibly can be. And to let words that somebody says about me affect my performance, I think, would be foolish. Uh, I just take things as they come along, day by day. I don't really worry about it. I'm a very optimistic person. I can always see the bright side of things, regardless of what happens. Uh, people tend to be pessimistic. They drive me crazy. I, my wife, sometimes, I really get into it with her a little bit because she's basically very pe pessimistic. Rick handles that a lot better than I do. Rick feels I'm much more concerned about what people say and think more so than he is. He feels he is what he is and you either accept him, you either love him or hate him. I think he probably has to take a stand and say what he wants to say and do what he wants to do. And as long as he believes in it, then just stick by it. And I respect him for that. After all the years and all the criticism, is he able to leave that outside the door when he walks in the house, Pam? For some reason, the athlete can't seem to make the transition from the husband and father to whatever sport he goes into. Well, he's a sports celebrity. 
She's married well, to a I beautiful guess woman, I has a beautiful home. You know, I, I, he wasn't a sports celebrity when I married him, and I don't really look at him as a sports celebrity. I really strive for him to be a husband and a father first, and somebody who just happens to play basketball, and that's the way he makes his living second. Also, really wrapped up with my children right now. I really get a kick out of being with them and doing things with them, and I try to spend as much time as I can, whether it's going to watch my son track meet or, or what have you. I just enjoy spending time with them, and each one is a different person in his own right, and each one brings me a different degree of satisfaction and enjoyment, and I'm just trying to make the most of that. Many times heroes and celebrities are not that when they walk through the door at home. How was it for Rick Barry? I'm not any big star as far as my children are concerned. Uh, in fact, my two younger boys are in love with Clifford Ray. I mean, it's unbelievable. The, the three-year-old picked up on Clifford and, and mimics him. It's, it's unbelievable how he mimics him. I mean, he's, he's got his, his walk down, and he's got the mean, surly face, and uh, he plays basketball in a little basket, and he throws the slam dunks down in there, and I never taught him any of that. He just picked it up by himself, and then the two-year-old copies him, and, and they do an unbelievable uh, imitation of Clifford Ray. It's really fantastic. Rick, many people feel that because of the immense salaries, pro basketball players receive, that they've become sort of the spoiled brats of American sport. How do you feel about that? I'm sure that there are some individuals who are more concerned about the money that they're making than about the game itself, and I think that that's really unfortunate. And there's just too much emphasis, I think, put on, uh, on the money nowadays. And, uh, of course, the first thing that anybody wants to hear about when, a, when somebody's coming along, rookie coming out of college, hey, how much money is he making? What's his bonus? What's this? What's that? Well, I, I think that the owners have finally come to the point where they realize that they were killing themselves. They have nobody to blame but themselves for the price structure of basketball these days. Uh, the NBA owners were so worried about the ABA coming into existence that they started paying exorbitant figures to the rookies coming out of the league. Then the veterans got upset because they say, hey, I've played for five years and you're not compensating me, so I want more money. And then players start playing out options. And this is where all the problem has arisen. But now I think that they've uh, more or less become more level-headed about it, and you're not going to see those outrageous contracts, except for an exception, a player like a Walton, who was so great in college. How does Rick Barry want the uh, historians of basketball to write about him in 20 years? I would just like them to say that Rick Barry was a fine all-around basketball player, that he could do a little bit of everything and do it well. And that's another perspective on the heart of the Golden State soon to be called the Oakland Warriors. Rick Barrett, Ken Squire, CBS Sports, near Walnut Creek, California. NBA playoffs will continue after this word from your local station. Florence Henderson and Oscar winner Ellen Burstyn invite you to the Women of the Year Awards, tonight at 10, 9 Central on CBS. Last month, I talked to a Mr. Miller. Last week, it was Mrs. Conley. I'm not sure they understood. There seemed to be so Ever feel you're not money. getting through to your banker with your personal money questions? Wouldn't you like one person who knows you to take care of your banking needs? See Irving Trust. We assign you one person, a personal banker. That person will handle all your money matters, savings, loans, checking, whatever. And in this busy world, isn't that what you need? Get personal with Irving. In 1850, Levi Strauss invented the toughest pants the West had ever known, Levi's blue jeans. We put a little blue jean in everything we make. Today, we're threading that same blue jean spirit through every shirt, pant, and jacket we make. We put a little blue jean in everything we make. In everything we make. Levi's. Channel 2, New York. Welcome back to the Seattle Coliseum. And Rick Barry has to find the key here in the second half if Golden State is going to get back into this basketball game. Here at halftime, as 14,000 fans relax and await the start of the final 24 minutes of action, let's run down the rest of the NBA playoff series. And this is the way things look. You recall earlier this afternoon, Houston beat Boston by a score of 117 to 102. So they're very much back in that series, Len. Well, the home team has won every one of those first three games, and I think, of course, the fourth game will be played in Houston. So we'll see what happens. Dave Cowan's fouled out in that game, and certainly that was a factor this afternoon. You'll be able to see that fourth game on CBS Tuesday night. 
That's the Eastern Conference semifinal playoff series. Like all of these series now, the, the best of seven. Eastern Conference, Buffalo and Washington. That series is tied at two games apiece after a very exciting game last night. Didn't that Bob McAdoo put on a show? 50 points. Of course, he's quite capable of scoring 50 points anytime he walks out on a basketball floor. I'm still surprised, though, that Washington, with all their great talent that they have, they, I still think, will beat the Buffalo Braves, but you never know. Game five of that series scheduled for tomorrow. And you'll see it on CBS and right here in Seattle. This is the way things stand. Golden State leads it two games to one but they now have the the home court advantage because two of the last three games following this one will be played in Oakland on Golden State's home court. So it's it's vitally important for uh, the Seattle Supersonics to win this one at home today. And they're playing quite well so far. Golden State won that first game easily. They won by 27 after leading at, at times by 30 points. Seattle edged them at Oakland. And then, of course, the last game Thursday night here in Seattle, the Warriors won. Chicago and Kansas City, Omaha. And uh, like a couple of the other series, this one is knotted up at two games apiece. And game five is scheduled tomorrow in Chicago. And you'll be able to see it on uh, CBS. They had a thriller last night that Kansas City, Omaha narrowly won 104 to uh, 104 to 100. That game went overtime, by the way. And uh, Chicago, I know, lost uh, uh, Sloan. He was ejected from the ball game. Yep, and Van Leer fouled out. Chet Walker must have come up with a real clutch fourth quarter performance just to get the game into overtime. So that's the way things stand around the National Basketball Association as suspense continues to build in the NBA playoffs of 74, 75. I think people are oftentimes surprised by the amount of money uh, we can save them on their homeowner's insurance. Uh, and uh, although I don't think that's the primary reason uh, they buy from me or buy from state farm agents, I think the reason they buy from me and, and other fellows like myself is uh, because of the great service we render. For low rates and good service on homeowner's insurance, see your nearby State Farm agent. State Farm is there. When the Benton family goes out to dinner, they have to cross a big chunk of the North Atlantic to do it. So when they get to our Pizza Hut in Maine, we want to give every Benton exactly what he wants. And not just a delicious pizza, piping hot cavatini pasta, salads, and sandwiches too. When families like the Bentons take the trouble to come to our restaurant, we make sure it's worth the trip. At Pizza Hut, our people make it better. Hello, I'm Bob Cousy. You know, I'm very proud to be a member of the National Basketball Hall of Fame. Here in the Honest Court, you see the portraits of the great men in the history of the game, along with the listings of the contributions each made to basketball. So why not plan a visit to Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts, on the campus of Springfield College? It's open daily except for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Day. Both teams back in the court now, taking a few warm-up shots prior to the start of the second half of play. Seattle, uh, I guess surprisingly, when you look over the season stats again, has been uh, out-rebounding Golden State this afternoon. As we mentioned uh, at the start, uh, Golden State was the second-best rebounding club in the NBA in the regular season, and uh, Seattle was the third worst, but that's been turned 25-19 as the rebound edge. Let's take a look at some of the highlights in the uh, first half of play. You'll recall first uh, quarter. Golden State at the edge, and then, of course, Seattle came back. Clifford Ray, of course, normally sets up at the high post, and he likes to hand off to somebody. Charlie Johnson, his teammates call him CJ, saw an opening, and he got around, and Burleson was unable to pick him up, and he got the basket. Of course, Tom Burleson can do some scoring of his own, and he exhibited that in the first half. He was tripped, and everyone stopped, thinking the whistle was blown, but then when he regained balance, and without the whistle, he went in for the basket. Rick Barry is not having a good night a good afternoon offensively but he did pass off considerably and one time was to Keith Wilkes who of course can really hit that open jump shot when they double team Barry and once again Tom Burleson who they're going to more and more as the season progresses especially here in the playoffs gets that hook shot going that we said that he used so effectively in college and now that he gets adjusted to the lane is using well in the pros Fred Brown of course was the man that warmed up in the second quarter here he hit a shot that is easy for him when he's shooting well near the top of the key and he got a screen that freed him. And once again, 
it's brown. Of course, when you're hot, you're hot, I guess, and everything seems to drop in as that shot shows there. They, Seattle, became the aggressive team in the second quarter. They started controlling the boards, as Frank was alluding to a minute ago, and that enabled them to get some second and third efforts. And when you give Spencer Haywood a little shot like that from the corner, he's going to put it in. Al Adels, looking over the stats, cannot be too happy with either the score or the stats. Here is what Al Adels is looking at, and he is not very happy right now with these uh, figures. Sonics with 48% of their field goals to 37% for the... <laughs> Warriors and they've uh, Sonic's done well from the free throw line 86 percent and as we mentioned they have out rebounded Golden State 25 to to 19. Some of the individual highlights Frank in 22 minutes Rick Barry made one out of eight shots from the floor and scored only six points. Wilkes was the leading Warrior rebound or uh, scorer with 11. The Warriors of course made only 17 of 46 shots that's not very good. On the other hand, for Seattle, Tom Burleson made five of nine shots, registering 13 points. Their leading scorer, though, was Fred Brown with 19 in 17 minutes of play. He made six out of 10 shots, seven out of eight from the free throw line. And Little Slick Watts passed off for seven assists to lead both teams in that category. The leading rebounder was surprisingly Talvin Skinner, who pulled down seven rebounds. And credit Skinner not only with good rebounding, but with... Uh, <laughs> but with excellent defensive play. An old Boston Celtic tradition is you always make the last shot in warm-ups. And Bill Russell saw someone miss just then, so he sent Leonard Gray down to the other end of the floor for a slam dunk. Watch the Boston Celtics warm-up sometime before a game. You'll always see John Havlicek put it in. Red Arbach, and I guess it's rubbed off on many of his former players. Very superstitious. Big Bill superstitious? I can't believe that. Well, I'm not sure whether he is or he's not, but he's not taking any chances. He's not taking any chances, exactly. All right, ready to go in the second half of action, the final 24 minutes of play. The officials, Mendy Rudolph and Paul Mahalik. Merlison in the center circle along with Clifford Ray. Sonics by 10, 57-47. Wilkes controlling the tip to Barry. Beard. Wilkes guarded very closely by Spencer Haywood. Did a good job defensively. Here's Wilkes over Burleson hitting. 13 points by Keith Wilkes. Looks like they're going to have to rely on Wilkes an awful lot this afternoon. And he has responded, especially the two games Barry missed in regular season. Keith came up with great games. Burleson. Watch. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Barry. Going high to pull it down. Slick Watts really didn't want to shoot that shot. I think he may have thought he was going to draw the foul. Wilkes trying to hit and then on his follow through. Bumping Archie Clark. For Keith Wilkes in the game, that is his third personal foul. You're so upset that you miss an easy jump shot as Wilkes did then that you want to get your own rebound and then you're over exuberant to foul him. Here's Skinner. Let the both sides and rebounds. Allison gets his first two of the second half, gives him 15 on the game. He has really improved this year, and he has learned to get closer and closer to the basket with one or two steps, and that's what he did there. Clifford Ray, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Wilkes with six seconds. Tip and try by Beard, again by Beard. Oh. Little one-on-one -on -one going there between Beard and Pat Skinner. Number 22, Mindy Rudolph, the dean of NBA officials in his 22nd season, calls an offensive foul on Butch Beard. So credit Calvin Skinner with a great effort. It's the fourth personal on Butch Beard. Let's see where he did it. He, he jumped over Calvin Skinner's back right there. Beard, the only player who has been hobbled, uh, and he's slipping right now for the Warriors. He's turned his ankle several times in this playoff series. He's playing despite that injury. That's beautiful. By Burleson getting it into Watts, and it's 61 49 and a 12 point foul for the Seattle Supersonics with 10 minutes and 27 seconds left to play in the third period here at the Seattle Coliseum.
Today, at a high-level meeting, Volkswagen engineers announced to their management that the new Volkswagen Rabbit would average an incredible 38 miles to a gallon down the highway, go from 0 to 50 in a swift 8.2 seconds, and it wouldn't cost a bundle. Management's reaction? Happy days are here again, the skies above are clear again. When a man uses an aftershave, what does he really want? Fancy bottles! Full of fancy perfume! And fancy prices? No! A man wants to smell like a man! There's something about Aqua Velva! He wants to be cool and refreshed! There's something about Aqua Velva! A man wants to feel like a man! Feel like a man! Cause there's something about an Aqua William Melton Russell, candidate for coach of the year with the job that he's done with this young Seattle team, featured six rookies. There's never been a team that's gotten into the NBA playoffs with that many rookies. You can see the job they're doing today. Johnny Johnson bringing it down for Golden State to Beard. Keith Wilkes. Barry, who has just six points in the first half and only one field goal. Wilkes trying to hook it over Carlson. Hayward. Grabs the rebound. Skinner. Not to Watts. Got the shot. Didn't take it. Skinner from the corner. Cliff Ray. Although Watts is not the man they want shooting, he passed to Skinner, and I'm not sure that Seattle wants Skinner to take that shot. So they didn't really work it the way they wanted to that time. Butch Beard, one time Seattle Supersonic, driving Slane and missing. Barlison. Three on two. How about that? That'll give him go between Burleson and Skinner. Boy, I hate to be in his way. Three on two fast break with Big Tom in the middle. At 17 points for Burleson, 63 to 49. Let's look at it again. Lynn? He can handle the ball. Ideally, you don't want the man to handle the ball. Credit Talvin Skinner with making a fine play, a good give and go. Johnson. It's for Golden State. You might have noticed uh, Barry backing off a little bit because he's in foul trouble and he did not contest Burleson on that dunk. He probably didn't have much of a chance anywhere with that guy coming at you. This is, this is where your home court advantage really play, pays off because Golden State now, if they were playing at home and they were coming from behind, the crowd would really get behind them if they hit a couple baskets. But if they hit a couple baskets here in Seattle, nothing will happen. Beard. And that's exactly what is happening. They're hitting and nothing's happening as far as the crowd goes, except to try to urge the Sonics to get it going again. Ten point difference between the two clubs. Clark trying to control the ball there and had Beard all over him. Yeah, that's five personal fouls on Butch Beard. Here comes Fred Brown into the game, and here comes Jeff Mullen for Golden State. So we'll see who has to guard or gets the honor of guarding Fred Brown. Slick Watts gets a rest, and the Brown, who is out of the firecracker in the second period when he scored 17 of his 19 points, is back in the contest. That's him, number 32. Haywood! Seattle now has a chance to break the game wide open, unless, of course, Rick Barry or someone for Golden State should get the hot hand. Keith Wilkes getting away from Haywood. Charlie Johnson, the open man, he's got 12. 65-55. Brown. Johnson all over him. Underneath to Burleson. Rick Pretty Barry. collision there with Barry. Yeah, right Barry now. was helping out from the weak side. He kind of fell back, not only trying to avoid a foul, but hopefully getting a charge call on Burleson. Johnson, who's been the only warrior to hit here in the second half, really. Barry has been shooting. Johnson again, this time missing, and Haywood grabs another rebound. Sonics continue to control the backboards. Yep, they're the aggressive team. They're dominating the backboards, and they're picking up confidence here as the game progresses. Brown. Bounces right to Haywood. Everything going right for Seattle. Good hit the one-hander, and Ray grabs the next one. We'll see what Golden State does on offense. I think Rick Barry's got to start taking some shots, and obviously hitting them as well. Keith Wilkes has a clear shot from 22 feet. Haywood 
One rebound after the other. Two on one. Brown off to Skinner. Let's see, goaltending or a foul? No, it's a foul on uh, Golden foul. State. Loose ball, loose ball foul. foul. Fred Brown tried to delay until the last second to pass off to the man underneath. It was an outstanding block by Clifford Ray that time. The foul went to number 10, Charlie Johnson. Haywood. Mullins with the rebound. Three on three situation. Johnson back to Mullins. Wilkes. Nice move to the basket by Keith Wilkes. Now Golden State, maybe because Seattle's defense is running up a little, is starting to score more. But to get back into the after game, they're going to have to stop Seattle. Clark. Ray, good position on Bullison that time to grab the rebound. Down to Perry. That's oh, Rick's second oh, basket oh. of the game. Second layup. 65 <laughs> 59. And now out. Russell on his feet calling timeout. And it looked like Seattle was going to blow him out for a minute, but the Warriors have fought back and have narrowed the margin to six points with 6.41 left in the third period. Here's your car battery. Add water. Keep it clean. It lasts an average of 38 months. Now, J.C. Penney introduces the revolutionary new battery that will make yours obsolete. You never have to add water. And it's so powerful that J.C. Penney will guarantee it for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or catalog desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. Buick has taken the concept of a V8 and created something pretty special. The Buick V6. It shares design efficiencies with our V8s, but with greater fuel economy. And it's so good we've made it standard on three entirely different sized Buicks. The small rakey Skyhawk, the compact Skylark, and the midsize Century. It means you can drive your idea of an economy car and enjoy a Buick at the same time. Buick, dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Once again, a look at what you'll be seeing tomorrow on the NBA on CBS. Buffalo and Washington upcoming at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then the fifth game of the series between Chicago and Kansas City, Omaha, from the Chicago Stadium at 3.30 Eastern time. And then Tuesday night, another special prime time NBA on CBS telecast. The fifth game of the series between Boston and Houston. We heard during that last time out some of the Warrior players saying, let's go, let's run them. They're starting to get tired. Well, obviously, that's what Golden State would like to do is start running the Sonics. Archie Clark with the basketball. Tab Skinner. Back to Clark, the crafty veteran. Only real playoff veteran that the Sonics have this young ball club. Fred Brown driving the lane. Trying to get his own rebound. Burleson has it. In order to start the fast break, Golden State needs to get some rebounds. As just shown there, they're not. Tom Burleson got it and put it in. A little tough to fast break without the ball. It sure does. Burleson now has 19. 67, 59, Sonics. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Wilkes. Off the raid. Seven seconds on the shot clock as Mullins guns it. Well there you go, there you go. Burleson can't believe the call by Paul Mahalik, the official. Mullins going to set up the out-of-bounds play. Looks like Watts is getting ready to come in. Berry still has to hit one of those patented long jumpers. Wilkes with a rebound try. They're going to call a foul. It's either going to be on Ray or Wilkes. He'll go the other way. Berry, once again on that long jump shot, was short, Frank. That's the way he's missed most of them. It's the fourth personal foul on Keith Wilkes. <laughs> That's the second time today Keith has missed a shot that he probably felt he should have made. And players get upset with themselves and they go too aggressively after the ball. And he did there. Penalty and effect now. It's the fifth team foul on the Warriors. Sonics have had only one team foul against them here in the third period. One. Haywood. Spencer Haywood. He was on the 1968 United States Olympic team and only the age of 19. He'll be 26 years old on Tuesday. Gets the margin back to 10 points. He has 12 in the game. 
Haywood injured earlier this season, but he has certainly come back strong. Ninth in the league in scoring. Average of 22 points per game. Pollock. Off to Barry. From 12 feet. Short the back rim. No good. I think we're going to have shoving called on Ray. Yeah, that was an easy play to call by Mindy Rudolph. Clifford Ray definitely did push off. Rick Berry acted that time like he didn't want the shot. Looked like he wanted Keith Wilkes to take it. He's putting it up an awful lot for the Warriors today. Wilkes took over a great deal of the offensive slack when uh, Barry was injured for a brief period of time, scoring better than 30 points on a couple of occasions. And his play normally, though, is to complement Barry. One plus one here for Spencer Haywood. Eleven point advantage for the Sonics. Oh! Charlie Johnson breaking across the lane to grab it. Barry from the corner. Brown gets the rebound. Barry was short once again. Tab Skinner driving on Barry. Dickey getting ready to come into the game for Golden State. Watts to Haywood. The Brown, Mullins on him. Skinner with the rebound. Boy, there were three blue shirts underneath the basket, and somehow Skinner got in there and put it through. And Golden State calls timeout. Sonics get a standing ovation from their fans as they have built their lead to 13 points with four minutes and 46 seconds left to play in the third quarter. You know, you have a nice head of protein there. You notice how I call hair protein? Hair is practically all protein. The beating hair it takes, it can lose protein. That can make it look dull and lifeless. This is a greaseless hair groom. It's called Men in Protein 29 because it's got protein in it. Protein that actually gets absorbed into the hair. Yeah, right into the hair. Men in Protein 29 helps your hair look thicker, fuller, really healthy. Protein 29, it's available in spray, gel, and liquid. Chevrolet has something new to show you, America. Nice! Looks like a Monza 2 plus 2. The 75 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Right, America. Only this is a new Monza. Oh, yeah? It's $305 different. $305 less. This is a new lower price model called the Monza S Hatchback Coupe. S, as in smart? Smart, sensible, sporty, all of that. And that's not all, America. There's a new Nova S Coupe, too. Hot dog! $106 less than any other Nova, and $349 less than the newest compact from Chevrolet's nearest sales competitor. S, as in smart and sensible. Right, America. New low prices on Monza S and Nova S. So see your Chevy dealer before you make any deal. Now that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Chevrolet, now that makes sense. So come on in, America. Chevrolet, you've done it again. Oh, all right, all right. That makes sense. Golden State to throw it in. Seattle trying to apply a little pressure here in the backcourt. Charlie Johnson gets it across without any problem. Fred Brown guarding it. Mullins from outside. Two. That's by Mullins. The That's form eight. The former Duke Blue Devil is certainly capable of hitting the outside shot. Again, though, I'm surprised to see Dudley, who was going to come into the game a minute ago, he was getting his warm-ups off. He didn't come in, but I'm surprised we haven't seen Phil Smith, the second-round pick from USF, in the game today. Watch. Nice fake. Oh, a little bit off balance, but it'll count. Normally not a shooter. When things like that go in, you know things are going well for you. 74-61. Keith Wilkes arching his shot. Brown climbing high to bring it down. Driving on Mullins. Two, three, 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 three. Mullins drawing the foul, or rather fouling Brown. Mullins has a lot of trouble guarding Fred Brown. As we said, he's a good one-on-one -on -one player. He likes to leap and jump going to the basket. He's very accurate with his shot that way, although we didn't get to find out because of Clifford Ray, but he was fouled by Mullins. 
three to make two here for the veteran Fred Brown. With 3.44 left in the quarter, the Warriors are out of fouls. They're in the penalty situation. Seattle shooting the penalty free throws. Seattle has only one team foul, so they do not, or they are in control of the game. They're not having to foul the Warriors very much. Brown is the first man to go over 20 points in the game. And a 15-point bulge now for the Seattle Sonics, their biggest lead of the contest. Keith Wilkes, Haywood all over him. Mullins driving on Brown. Foul call on the Sonics. And of course, like any other situation in the NBA, a good offensive player is always going to beat a good defensive player. So Mullins turns it around down at the other end, and he drives to his left on Fred Brown and draws the foul. Brown's second personal. Mullins has eight points in the game. Seventy-six, sixty-two. as Russell sneaks a look at the scoreboard. Watts puts on the brakes. Three second lane violation call against the Sonics. Seattle had only nine turnovers in the first half, but the Warriors had only seven turnovers in the first half, so that's the least of their problems. Johnny Johnson. Ray back to Johnson from 20 feet. Haywood has gotten himself a lot of rebounds in this third quarter. Fred Brown. Mullins trying to stay with him. Haywood driving. Oh, and just about throw the backboard down. You always think someone's going to get hurt in a situation like that, a broken wrist or something like that. Haywood. Spencer tried to dunk the ball on a great baseline drive. You would have thought maybe he was fouled by Clifford Ray, but the official said no. However, Burleson was fouled by Wilkes, and for Keith, that is his fifth personal foul. So Rick Berry's going to have to be rushed back into the game, and they're going to have to get Wilkes out on the bench. You mentioned Haywood's rebounding work a moment ago. He has seven rebounds in the third period. Well, I guess Bill Russell has decided that is good enough to earn him a rest because he takes him out and puts in rookie Leonard Trey. That is 21 points for Big Tom Burleson. So he and Brown both over the 20 point mark and the Sonics have a 16 point lead. Dudley to Mullins gunning it from outside. Nothing will go down for Golden State. They're starting to perform like a team that is behind now. They're starting to force a few shots. Eighteen point advantage. Twenty three points for Bellison. Barry. Dudley. Basket, I believe, will count. And a foul call underneath the bucket on Gray. Dickey will go to the free throw line. He'll only get one free throw because the basket was good. You can only have a total of three points in any one play in the NBA. So whether he makes or misses, he only got the one throw. Sonics battling for those rebounds, and they come up with yet another. Watts off to Brown. Change of pace. Burleson has it knocked out of his hands underneath the basket. Tim's getting a little physical right now. Dudley, number 15, gets up off the pileup, and on the bottom is Tab Skinner. Up third and five, and Skinner's the ball carrier. He's got the ball. They have a jump ball. Skinner and Ray almost went at it in the Thursday night game. They squared off once or twice. Skinner and Dudley. They have been two very friendly teams, and neither team has complained too much about the officiating. That is generally the rule, though, when Mindy Rudolph is present. Still loose. Uh-oh. 
Morris Dudley throwing the ball at Burleson. What did I say about the teams being very friendly out there? Perfect timing. Al Adels is always is out there to break it up. <laughs> Adels' assistant is Joe Roberts. Leonard Gray picks up the foul. Dickey is just trying to, Dudley is trying to cool off. He's a very likable guy. Oh, here we go. Well, we got a wild scramble here in the corner. Look out, there's some people in wheelchairs over there. Things are really getting rough. It was Derek Dickey and Leonard Gray. They had pushed each other a couple minutes ago down at the other end of the floor, I had noticed. And then they were exchanging words while they were trying to cool off Charles Dudley. Here's Gray being let out of it by Skinner. Gray, number 11, being held over to the bench. They're going to have a technical foul now. Yep, we'll see who they assess it to. Yeah, you can have a, a fighting foul, which would not be a technical foul, or you can make it a technical foul, and that's what Mindy is going to do. Now Russell is over there to check to see exactly what Mindy is going to do. And they rejected it. Gray has been thrown out of the game. It is up to the official. He does not have to assign two technical fouls. He doesn't have to assign any. He can, at any time he wants, eject the player, and that's what he's decided to do. He decided that Leonard Gray was the aggressor. As Russell joined with Mindy Rudolph as Rick Berry made the free throw. Now we go for ball, right? Right. Good ball, score the technical. Russell, I guess, is... Now let's see if we can pick up what they're saying. Now I think they're trying to decide where will play resume and with what. I heard Bendy say to somebody there'll be two more. Somebody. Now Adams wants the free throws or the ball. Trying to think what the play was prior to the fight. Let's see, oh, it was Dudley and Burleson. They, Dudley threw the, Dudley ball, threw the ball at Burleson, right? Well, what happened before that? At any rate, Golden State will get the ball at midcourt. Now the free throw by Barry on the technical made it 80 to 65. The hand is for Leonard Gray as he leaves the floor. He's one of the many outstanding rookies on this Seattle team. Was an outstanding player at Cal State Long Beach. Now the two captains are being talked to by Mindy Rudolph, Haywood, and Barry. He's explaining apparently why he assessed only one technical and only ejected one player. Rebound to Skinner. Shot was missed by Phil Smith, who has just come into the game for the first time. He's a rookie from San Francisco, if you can see well. Skinner from deep in the corner. George Johnson has also come in. This is Dudley. Pass batted away by Watts. Out of bounds. It'll be Golden State's ball. Got gets on Derek Dickey a little bit, who completely by accident trips Slick Watts. Derek Dickey's a very unusual young man. As a hobby, he has a seven-foot boa constrictor. That's unusual. <laughs> Tells you a little something about his personality, I guess. Here's Barry. He has yet to hit one of those in the what? entire game. Now, once again, Barry was short. Now, now it's called. Every time there's a whistle now, these, these very pro Seattle fans and rabbit fans, and good fans they are, up off their feet. The foul is on Charles Dudley, his second. It'll send Slick Watts to the free throw line. You know, Watts said he read Bill Sharman's book on shooting. He used to wear that headband kind of off the crazy angle. And uh, what Sharman says that you got to be square to the basket. <laughs> In order to shoot, so now he keeps it on straight. Whoop. Now this play, the game is starting to get out of hand a little bit. I think you'll see the officials here for the next few moments call them very closely to try to regain control. Well, the other night, we had the officials call both coaches to the center of the floor and say the next guy that raised their fist was going to be thrown out of the game, which is a little bit unusual. 
This was after got about four uh, confrontations, near fights. But Seattle looks very good right now. The 16-point lead, and just a minute, just a minute left in the third quarter. Both teams in the penalty now. 81-66. Berlison into Archie Clark. Dudley picks him up at the center line. One minute left to play in the third quarter. Brown guns it. Two. Although he's a guard, he likes to shoot from the corner. Garrett Dickey. Rebound by Johnson. Tipped in on the second try. Big George Johnson. Number 52 can play into the backboard with the best of them. He's the Warriors' leading rebounder. Brown missing. Burleson takes it in. He is so tall that even though you do sometimes screen Burleson off, he's got those long arms and he just reaches over and taps it into the basket. 25 seconds left in the quarter. Barry underneath the Dudley. And good job. Great assist. There's a fine example of Barry's passing ability. When he goes up into the air, he is always a threat with those two hands to rifle a pass to an open teammate. Ten seconds. Shot clock and game clock the same. Five seconds. Brown curls in and out on him. Dudley going up. One second left to play in the quarter. Calling the foul on Skinner. Dudley will get one plus one. It was a loose ball foul. And if he could put these in, it would bring the Warriors to within 13 to start the fourth quarter. Certainly not out of the game by any means. How's that Brown use of substituting? With one second, Slick Watts comes in for Fred Brown. Eleven points for Dudley. Almost a hometown product here. Played at the University of Washington. That's it in the third period here at the Seattle Center. Capacity crowd of 14,000. The Sonics 19 straight sellout. Ecstatic with the Sonics 13 point lead. I don't know. He's half an hour late already. All units, I have a 1053 in Sector 5. Charlie 3 responding. Uh, Charlie 3, proceed to Route 6, overpass, probable injuries. Nancy, he comes at the table before your daddy gets home. What would your family do if one night you didn't come home? I have an injured and a possible fatal. Request two ambulances and a couple of records. They're on their way. What would they do if you became the other guy in a car accident? 1098 here. Make notifications to the families involved. We at Money, Mutual of New York, know how reluctant some people are to discuss life insurance. But if you'll call a money representative, we'll help plan your family's future. Just in case, one night, you're the one who doesn't come home. Mrs. Hagen, your husband's been in an accident. He'll be all right. He was the lucky one. Mutual of New York, Money, for the future. Now for the grand prize! A four-part question. Think carefully. What car gets 30 miles per gallon on the highway? Gremlin! Who's the furthest on a tank of gas? Gremlin! Who's the best resale value of any small car built in America? Gremlin. And is backed by the exclusive buyer protection plan! Gremlin! I love it! Where is it? The economical AMC Gremlin. It matches my dress! All right, final 12 minutes of action here at the Seattle Coliseum with the Sonics very much in charge right now. Shot missed by Smith. Rebound guarded in by Tab Skinner. 
Now between periods, Mendy Rudolph came over and tried to explain that situation to her. I think it would take us the entire last quarter to figure it out. <laughs> On the fight of the foul and everything else. Watts driving on Dudley. Quite briefly, what uh, Mindy just told us, Frank, he assessed to Leonard Gray a personal foul, which is a fighting foul, which is also a team foul, and a technical foul, decided to eject him, and the offending team gets the ball at midcourt after that sort of incident. That's why Golden State got the ball after the technical free throw. Foul called in that instance on Slick Watts. And that's his, off. Yeah, that's his fifth personal foul, so they'll have to get him out of there, too. Barry. It may be repetitious, but once again, Rick Barry was short. Watts trying to beat it off to Haywood. Burleson oh. over Johnson. Air ball. Barry comes down with it. Dudley. Is tipped off the back. Back to Dickey, and he connects for two. Derek is not known for his outside shooting ability, but you get an open shot, anybody in the NBA can put it in. He's a great rebounder, too. Harrison waiting for someone to break. Haywood. Harrison trying to set the pick for Haywood. It'll be on Tom Burleson setting the screen, a blocking foul. Too bad, it was a great screen other than that. It's the third personal foul on Burleson. Dudley driving off to Dickey. Bill Smith, the rookie from the University of San Francisco. He's done a good job in the latter stages of the season. He's got the call pretty close now. Now they're trying to get control of the game back. Very unusual reaction to Rick Berry. Usually when things aren't going well for him, his temper flares and he gets very angry at himself. Maybe even his teammates and the officials, but he seems very cool and collected out there this afternoon. Smith with the left-handed shot. Couldn't can it. Haywood gets another rebound. Just over 10 minutes left to play in the game. Seattle trying to tie the best of seven series at two games apiece. As Barry went for the steal, that'll be his fifth personal foul. The crowd will love it. <laughs> I don't think Rick, who led the NBA in steals, has had one this afternoon. He really wanted that one. He, he, he was staring daggers through Mendy Rudolph, uh, as we call that if foul. If he gets mad, he might start playing better. Haywood. Long pass, tipped away, and Haywood couldn't keep it in bounds. 87-74, Sonics, as Keith Wilkes comes back into the game. 15 points for Haywood after a slow start. There's a violation call on the inbounds pass by George Johnson, so Seattle gets it underneath their own basket. Brett Brown will throw it in. Oh, these Sonic fans really raising the roof now. Brown. Oh. He's warming up again like he was in that second period when he had 17 points. 89-74. Brown is 25 in the game. Leading score on either side. Calvin Skinner picks up the foul. And that's going to bring John Hummer off the bench into the game. At the next dead ball. Smith. Dickey. Burleson with the rebound. Fred Brown. Got it. Walking he, flat on his back. He loves to penetrate, and especially from the corner. Not the easiest place on the floor to shoot from, but he does it well. And Golden State will call timeout with 9 minutes and 16 seconds left to play in the game. Trying to regroup for the last discharge at the Sonics, who lead it 91 to 74. Now comes Miller time. He blew out that 100-foot candle and saved thousands of barrels of crude. And now it's time for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. 
America's quality beer since 1855. If you got the time, if you got the time, we got the beer. We want to show you something. The brilliant use of space inside the 1975 Honda Civic CVCC. Compare it with any other subcompact. How did we do it? We designed the Civic so there was more space devoted to the passengers than to the car. Or to put it another way, from the inside out. Honda Civic. What the world is coming to. Yeah, they just scored, so it is. Once again, a reminder, next Saturday afternoon, the one you've been waiting for, the Jimmy Connors John Newcomb Tennis Challenge Match. $250,000 at stake in Las Vegas as we find out who is indeed the best tennis player in the world. You'll see it all here on CBS beginning at 3.30 Eastern Time. Those are two aggressive tennis players, and we've got some aggressive basketball players this afternoon. Five different players, each have five fouls. Keith Wilkes, Butch Beard, Rick Berry, Talvin Skinner, and Slick Watts. Gracie has come into the game for Golden State for the first time, number 22. This is Wilkes hitting. 91-76. Spencer Haywood driving on Dickey. Burleson at the free throw line has a knocked out of his hand. Good job by Dudley. Wow. Meeting it off to Bracey, and Bracey fouled and turned by Archie Clark as he went for the layup. Clark didn't take any chances that time, knocking Bracey to the floor. Bracey, of course, is one of the many guards that Al Lattles has tried this afternoon, not only to try to get some offense, but to try to contain Fred Brown. Good job by Dudley in getting that ball knocked out of the hands of Bolison. And he really lowers a boom on him there, does Mr. Clark. Golden State not only running out of time, but they're running out of timeouts. You're allowed seven timeouts in a game, and as we come to the end, Golden State has only two left, Seattle three. That's Rod Derline, number 21, hometown product who played his college basketball right here in Seattle. Good shooter. In the game for the first time, Bracey on the free throw line for Golden State. Oh. Dudley called him a foul. Now backcourt foul. Very costly. It'll be two free throws attempted by Seattle. Dudley reached in and fouled Rod Durline, who last year at Seattle U is the backcourt partner of the outstanding and high scoring Frank Olenek. Warriors have four team fouls here in the final period. The Sonics have three. Basically, Frank, everything looks bad for the Warriors right now, including the fact that Rick Berry is on the bench, unable to shoot and score well today. Batted out of bounds by Fred Brown. Here comes the last ditch effort by Rick Berry. He reports and comes into the game, and he is exchanging words now with someone at the scoring table. <laughs> That's the Rick Berry I'm used to. Wilkes to George Johnson. And Dudley loose under the basket for a minute, but they didn't see him. Wilkes up the lane. Somebody got him from behind. Two boys down here pushing onto the hole. He's got the whole story right there. For Spencer Haywood guilty. Right, Spencer Haywood, that's just his third personal foul. Keith Wolf is free throw line this afternoon. One. Keith Wilkes, as he makes the first free throw, now has 18 points. Wilkes with 19 points now, and that is his best playoff game in this series. This is the fourth game, of course. Golden State came into the game, game leading the series two games to one. Ironically, Golden State has beaten Seattle three out of four times they played here in Seattle. Wilson has his shot blocked by George Johnson. Now to Bracey. Two points. It isn't often you see a guy 7-2 get his shot blocked. Certainly this game isn't over. Eight minutes, of course, is a great deal of time to play. And the Seattle Sonics have just an 11-point lead. 
Haywood, good Three job seconds. of following in. Three seconds. Burleson hits. Haywood could have gone up for the shot himself, but it was a very wise choice to pass off to the open man. Burleson has 27 points as Keith Wilkes puts it up there and scores. Wilkes over the 20 point mark with 21. Brown driving on Dudley. Nice. Outstanding offensive basketball player out of Iowa. I think he has probably earned his starting position back after this afternoon. 29 points for Brown, and Brown got the rebound. Seven minutes left to play. Brown again. Oh, he's got a nice soft touch. He puts that thing up there that just floats. 31 points. That is obviously his best playoff game in this series. 26 he had in the other Seattle win. He was a key factor in that uh, victory. He also made the winning basket. Here is Rick Barry's, what, second basket of the second half? Second in the second half, third in the game. It might be a little bit late, though, but you never know. He's got 11 points, but five of those have been on free throws. Robinson. Barry grabs the rebound. Now Seattle, they better not cool off. Here comes the Golden State Warriors. They're starting to run a little bit more now. Wilkes trying to get loose for the shot is bumped by Burleson. Six minutes, 21 seconds to go. It'll be free for you. I've got it down to seven points now. So we have one and one for two. Wilkes in the line, one and one. One plus one for Keith Wilkes. NBA Rookie of the Year candidate out of UCLA. It'll probably be him or John Drew, although Tom Burleson, of course, in his late season surge, would have to be given consideration if they would devote on the playoff performances, certainly. Rushed back in by Bill Russell as Slick Watts. He, of course, can help take control of the game, hopefully. Charlie Johnson comes back in, and Dudley is out. The crowd understandably quiet, but hoping for Seattle to score a basket to get this lead a little more comfortable than it is. Hummer, number 42, into the game for the first time. That's Watts. But a Brown. Around Johnson. Nope. Tracy. Three on two situation. Golden State. Taps it off to Wilkes. Turn around jumper. Blocked out of bounds by Watts. You would have thought Golden State would have got a pretty good shot off of that fast break opportunity, but they didn't handle it real well, and Watts made a fine block on Wilkes. When a player shoots from behind his ear or head like Wilkes, you can block the shot from the side even though you're not that tall as Wilkes. Uh, Watts showed there. Wilkes driving around Haywood, trying to get loose, puts it up. No good. Allison ripping it away from Wilkes. Down to Brown. Fred has it knocked out of his hands by Barry, and a foul is called on Barry. And every one of the 14,000 fans will wave goodbye to Rick Barry. Rick Barry will wind up with three baskets and five free throws for 11 points. And it's been a long time since he has been held to that low a figure. A long afternoon for the man who must hit to make the Golden State Warriors go. Bill Russell calling his Sonics around him as we have five minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the Sonics with a 12-point cushion. I'm Wally Bruner of Wally's Workshop. Let me show you what professionals use to repair wood. They use genuine plastic wood, next best thing to wood itself. You just fill in with plastic wood, let dry, sand down, paint it. The repair doesn't show. You can drill, saw, plane, whittle, and nail into plastic wood. Use it to rebuild screw and nail holes, cover up your mistakes, even rebuild fancy scroll work. The one and only plastic wood, next best thing to wood itself. The incredible new Volkswagen Rabbit. Averages 38 miles per gallon down the highway. Goes from zero to 50 in a snappy 8.2 seconds. It won't cost you a bundle. 
and it's easy to watch. Happy days are here again. Making a beer that's easy isn't easy. It takes time. Blending the ripest hops to make it go down easy takes time. Softening the barley to make it go down easy takes time. Even waiting for the right time takes time. But when we dedicated ourselves to making Schmitz the easy beer, we said, the heck with time. Schmitz, the easy beer. Some checking some figures on Barry. The last time he was below 11 points was March 2nd against Portland when he was held at three. Including 80 regular season games that he played in and now four playoff games. That is the first time this year that Rick Barry has fouled out. It is the 12th time this year that he is only the 12th that he has been under 20 points in scoring. He had the high this year in the NBA for points in a game, 55. Fred Brown with those two free throws has 33 points. He's the top scorer in the game as the Sonics go over the century mark. 101 to 87. Dickey. Oh, Gracie losing the ball. As he jumped over the bench, he almost put his foot in the little ball basket. Good way to get hurt. That looks very much like these two clubs will be coming back to Seattle once again after playing at Golden State. Next Tuesday night in the fifth game of their series. Hummer off to Burleson. Drives on George Johnson, puts it up. Nice touch, gets his own rebound. Sam dunks it. Outstanding game for Tom Burleson. He's got 29 points. That's his high in this playoff series. Line performance. I don't know. John Drew and Keith Wolf. Maybe Burleson should be rookie of the year. Well, as you mentioned, if you take it on the way they're going in the playoffs, you may be right, but going back over the entire season, perhaps uh, Wilkes has shown a greater deal of consistency. Oh, he's been a tremendous consistent player all year for Golden State, no question. Hummer. Burleson. Four and a half minutes to go. Seattle, of course, running down the 24 second clock now as much as they can. Having no problem, it seems, getting an open shot when they do decide to shoot. Charlie Johnson. Gracie. Marlison and Haywood arguing over that one. Fred Brown slows it down as he brings it across the center line. This was a must game for Seattle, of course. If they had lost this afternoon, they'd be down three games to one. Only twice in the 29-year history of NBA playoffs have teams come from behind after being down three games to one. Allison has it blocked on him by George Johnson. Some of the fans feel that gold ending should have been called as Haywood drops it. 24 second clock expires. I can't believe that they didn't reset it after that last shot attempt. <laughs> Some of the fans now, instead of yelling at the officials, they're getting on their own scorekeepers and clock keepers down here. 103.87. Dickey. Driving on Hummer. Ward, two shot. Ward, two on the floor. Ward's him off. John Hummer picks up the foul before the shot, but it'll still be one plus one for Derek Dickey. Steve hear that horn? Gracie getting a rest. He looks a little winded, and well, he should be. He hasn't played that much this year. In the playoffs so far, Bracey has played only a total of three minutes before this afternoon's game. So he might be a little bit out of shape. Dickey hitting on both free throws. He's got six points. 103 89. A little more than three and a half minutes left to go. Watt slowing it down. Charlie Johnson ready to take a swipe at it. Jump ball. Seattle, of course, was outstanding when they beat the Detroit Pistons two out of three in a playoff series just before this one. They won both the games, played here in Seattle, losing in Detroit. Now each team will have won and lost each one game on the uh, respective home floor. Seattle is capable of beating uh, Golden State at home. They've done it twice this year, which is more than uh, any other NBA team could say. 
Their Golden State during the regular season lost only a of 10 games at home out of 41 plays. Offensive foul called against Golden State. Six fouls on Keith Wilkes. Second Golden State Warrior player to foul out of a game, Bill Russell and his assistant Bob Hopkins. Obvious, obviously very pleased and confident at this stage. Wilkes fouls out with 22 points. Perhaps his best playoff performance from a scoring standpoint, but he's had to shoot a lot more today because of Barry's inability to hit the basket. Also had nine rebounds. Yeah, I think he probably had to take more of the offensive load that he would like to have. Three minutes left to play in the game. Haywood. Knocked out by Burleson. Seattle that time didn't run down the 24 second clock. Russell with his arms up in the air says Spencer why were you shooting. Let's run down the clock a little bit more. So you'll see him do that next time they get it. Charlie Johnson over Haywood. Hitting from 23 feet. The lead is cut to 12. Well stranger things have happened. And the team kind of laid like this down in the last couple of minutes. Brown. Shot clock is down to five seconds as Watts tries to the hoop. Great touch. Oh, he's talking about putting the soft shot up there. Seattle seems to run down the clock and then get any kind of shot they want to. And they're all dropping today. Phil Smith double teamed. Off to Bridges who has come into the game for Golden State. Fred Brown with the steal. Into Hummer. Haywood saves it. Now slows it down. 15 seconds to go and Watts just staring at that shot clock. Two minutes left to game on the game. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Brown. Smith grabs the rebound. Long lead pass. Stolen again by Brown. George Johnson gets it back and put it away. 105 to 91. And now the chorus of appreciation rises from the Seattle Supersonic fans as the clock winds down the last minute and a half. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Brown from the corner out to Watts with four seconds to go. He drills it. 107-91. That's the time left in the game. 120. And counting. Of course, Flick Watts, that's 11 points in the game and his best playoff game point wise to date. Air ball put up by George Johnson. Haywood grabs the rebound. He's out a ton of them today. Smith contesting him at the center line. Off to Brown. One minute left to go in the contest. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Charlie Johnson hanging on to watch. 18 footer. Foul will be on Ferguson. For Burleson, that's five personal fouls. Of course, it doesn't mean much at this stage. But that's probably the most fouls he has picked up in the four playoff games in this series and the three against Detroit. And that is further indication of why he is such an improved player. Earlier in the year, he was playing much less, yet getting in foul trouble more often. He has really cut down on his fouls. George Johnson. Frank, as you can see, he liked Rick Barry. And they are the only two. Shoots his free throws underhand. Only two in the NBA, I should add. Slick Watts putting a couple of moves on Charlie Johnson. 40 seconds left to play in the game. All over but the shouting now. As this series will be tied. Good move. Of course, that happened by Brown. When you're on defense like Golden State, you're overplaying, you're gambling. There's some, sooner or later, someone's going to break open underneath. Johnson. Jolly Johnson hits. That is 35 points for Brown. Top score in the game. His high on the year is 40, which he got a couple of times. They'll just run it down, and Golden State will run it down as everyone in the Seattle Center Coliseum comes to their feet. They love their Sonics this afternoon. Shot clock in tune with the game clock here. Five seconds. That'll last shot of the game, and Brown finds up a perfect afternoon. 
of the Seattle Supersonics as he rings the bell at the buzzer. Connecting for his 37th point of the game as the Supersonics route the Golden State Warriors 111 to 94 and will send the series back to Oakland on Tuesday for game five. Hey, you up there, would you, would you stop the picture? No, hold it. Everybody knows it's, it's tough to put a Muriel down, but do you know how easy it is to pick a Muriel up? These smooth air tips are still only five for 30 cents, and mild Muriel Coronellas only five for 35 cents. Good taste at a good price. Boy, we sure can use it now. Roll it. How are you feeling? Any pain? No. Ed Clark is going back to surgery. Fragile body tissue has failed to heal properly and ruptured. Can anything be done to help tissue heal? To help avoid still another operation? A mesh made of Marlex plastic interlaces with body tissue and gives it strength. Who developed the plastic that's helping patients avoid a return to surgery? The same company that makes fine products for your car. The Phillips Petroleum Company. Surprised? Frank Lieber along with Lynn Shackelford back at the Seattle Coliseum. 14,000 fans, the Sonics 19th straight capacity crowd filing out very happy on a rainy afternoon in Seattle as their Sonics are very much back in the picture in the NBA Western Conference semifinal playoff series with a resounding 111 to 94 victory over the Golden State Warriors. This, as we mentioned, sends the series back to Golden State for game five of the series. That'll be scheduled on Tuesday night. The teams will come back here to Seattle on Thursday night for game six. And uh, the seventh game, if necessary, will be played next Saturday afternoon. That'll be played in Oakland. Fred Brown, the leading scorer in the game with a tremendous offensive performance. He did not start the game, but he wound up pitching in 37 points. Most of them on those patented long jump shots. Let's talk to Fred now. And Lynn Shackelford. Lynn? With me here is obviously the game star, Freddie Brown. 37 points. Congratulations. That has to be one of the highlights of your NBA career so far. Well, I'm just glad we came out of the ball game with a win. You know, we really needed it. We, uh, we blew the first one here, and we needed the second one going down to Golden State, you know. You came off the bench and got real hot in the second quarter, but I think after today, you may have earned your starting position back. Well, I don't know about that. I've been coming off the bench uh, lately because of uh, I've had a, a sore shoulder, you know, but uh, I've been coming off and trying to get into the Florida game and do the best I can for the team. And I think your defense was outstanding today. Not only you, but the rest of the team. You obviously with your 37 points were great on offense, but you seem to control the tempo and you obviously put Rick Barry, the clamps on him. Well, that's true. I, we felt that if we can put as much pressure on Rick Barry if we could, that uh, it would take him completely out of the ball game and uh, everybody else would uh, contribute on, uh, on the scoring part of the game and we'd come out as a winner. You got hot, and you got the hot hand going in the second quarter. You felt you could make anything you put up? Yeah, that's true. I felt I could make anything I put up because I was getting shots that were uh, pretty much in my range, and uh, my teammates were looking for me, and, and uh, just hopefully, you know, I was glad that I was just hitting them. Brilliant performance today, Fred. Congratulations and good luck to you. Let's go now back to Frank Gleber. Thank you very much, Lynn. The final score once again here at Seattle, 111 to 94, the Sonics over the Golden State Warriors. Frank Lieber, along with Lynn Shackleford, saying so long from Seattle. Hey, there's mini wheats are coming. Oh, they're all American cereals. They come natural wheat. Oh, they're crisp and toasted. Sugar or cinnamon frosted mini wheats. They're neat little mini biscuits. Topped with plain frosting or brown sugar cinnamon. Plum tasty cereal. Part of a good nutritious breakfast. Sure is. Oh, they're all American sugar or cinnamon frosted mini wheats. From Kellogg's. Here's how it starts. You see someone with Kentucky Fried Chicken enjoy that first mouth-watering bite. Then you catch that irresistible aroma, and you just got to get a taste for yourself. In this world, there's only one fried chicken that always tastes so finger-licking good. And you got to say, hey, it's a Kentucky Fried Chicken Day, a Kentucky Fried Chicken Day. NBA, NBA, NBA. 
NBA playoffs sponsored by the new Volkswagen Rabbit. Happy days are here again. And by Mutual of New York, money for the future. <laughs>